You are now entering Maximum Driftcast, the only drifting podcast hosted by a Spanish soccer mom, a 30-year-old silver-haired fox going on 60, and finally, a 200-pound bowl of spaghetti with chimichanga arms. The champions, the champions, we are the champions. And we're back after a, a spicy weekend. Oh, that was, that was a spicy weekend for you, for sure. I don't know if it was a spicy weekend for me. I think there was <laughs> other people out there that had a really spicy weekend. And, you know, yeah. the, 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 Sam, the thing is that I realized about this is the sport of Formula Drift has been evolving, and people are really pushing the envelope. You know that. Oh, it's crazy. So, I mean, yep. Chris won his first event since 2004, mm-hmm. um, from what I recall from my math. I've been looking at my notes. And he did it in such a strange way. He knocked over every single cone in the chicane, which was really interesting. Like, I thought that... The, there was rules against that, but apparently you can just knock them all over, shoot them all over the course, do what you want, and that was his strategy. Because yep. the more cones you knock over, the more time it takes for uh, Ryan and Jim to run back out there and set them back up. His yep. tires cool down, right. he gets more grip, and makes James Dean drive into the wall. So we all saw that. But and do you guys, do you guys see what else he did? Yeah, run him over. You know, like go back in reverse, do a burnout on top of the cones. Yeah, I also he, he got out of the car and took a shit on the starting line. Oh I also know one thing I really saw him doing the pits is he's putting uh, pinholes in his tires. Sam, I don't know if you saw that, but he yeah, I saw putting... Dylan back there. He had a he had a little screw gun and he was hammering a bunch of nails into the side of the tires. Well, that also helps release more smoke. You know, a lot of tire mm-hmm. a lot of smoke is built up in the tire, so it creates more blinding smoke and also cools the tire. So you know, this the where the sport's going is pretty incredible with these these yeah. new tire it's rules science. and cone rules. Science. It's 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 so like. That, the best thing is that they are capable of doing this with such precision. It's, yeah. it's in, as I believe they have like a Bluetooth uh, deflating uh, device. Uh, device in yeah. their in their valve stems, so it's fully adjustable from from your iPhone. Because it's only for iPhones, like nobody wants this on well, Android. You know, just leave it up to Cheating Forsberg. You know, he's he's been having cone issues since we can yeah. remember in Orlando. They were know. working until like 1:30 a.m. installing these the, these punchers. device, a uh, hole punch yeah. machine on the tires. Um, I mean, pretty much, it, it's it's cheating if yeah. you don't get caught. Well, he hasn't so, won in two years until he starts punching yeah, holes again. Yeah, and that's so. exactly what happens, you know. Hey, what, what's up, guys? Oh, oh, oh uh, shit! God, uh, uh, how did you get this number? <clears throat> yeah, you guys, um, say something about the uh, pinholes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk yeah, about yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Big balls. Big balls actually said he uh, was watching live stream and he saw something strange. Big oh, balls, yeah. do you want to throw it yeah, down? Yeah, No. So Brian's been really thrown you under the bus for Just the past saying. five minutes here. I, I've been I've been uh, analyzing the footage and I've been carefully watching the background and I believe I spot I saw a sniper up in the trees. Just uh, getting a shot of the cone every time Chris would go by. Like, Chris would radium. Okay, we're ready. Yeah. And then uh, shoot the uh, You're changing your cone. story. Yeah, hey, Chris. Sorry. Just now that you're calling us. Yeah, Brian was just saying you were yeah, doing Yeah, Brian was really... pulling off on you. And we were like, yeah. Brian, no, take don't. it easy, man. Don't say that. So that's our friend. Well, we were all friends. I didn't know you were going to yeah, tell just... everyone how <laughs> it was um, to finally win an event. You know, I've never seen the side of Brian before. You know, it and was... uh, and Chris Jared said properly on the podium that this is your first win in decades, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's been um, a few decades, so I mean, the it was repeated over and over about just how incredible it was that we were able to finally get a win. So we yeah. really wanted to make sure that was clear. So, so we, hold on, we want to just... talk. We want to talk real quick about. Uh, your uh, just your your quick journey to victory. Um, we're not going to take too much of your time on the show today, but uh, before we get there, let's talk about first uh, how long it's been since you. Let's clarify this win streak <laughs> thing, and then let's just talk about the cone shit because it's st- stupid. There's just stupid stuff going on. But yeah, what's what's the actual win deficit? What's the win streak? What's what's your actual record here? Uh, so yeah, I'm now tied in second place overall for wins. Um, <clears throat> and my last win was. In April, Long Beach, 2014, we had since won two championships since then, and we set two podium records since then and been on the box every year. Uh, what I thought was funny was how they were acting like, I mean, yes, uh, I am the first to know that we had a bad year last year, but, um, you know, they were just so adamant about, like, oh, my God, it's just incredible to see him doing well. It was like, it was two events ago when we are in the finals, running James Dean. So it wasn't uh, that far off. Yeah. But, um, yes, uh, the first part of last year was pretty bad. And 
as you know, we've rebuilt the car completely. We had a clutch issue in round one. And so we, you know, we went out pretty early. We were obviously running with fourth and it was, it should have been closer, but you know, we were one arm tied behind our back. So we went out early and, and then this round, it just all came together and we had a really dialed car and it, it worked awesome. So before we get to your battles, let's talk about those damn cones. Why uh, were the oh, yeah. cones knocked over? Well, it was, you know, the the chicane on, on the banks. We only do the chicane on um, uh, Orlando. We actually don't even do it at Wall because there's... I was about to ask that because that's the worst bank. What's that? That's the worst bank, right? You know, that's the most grade on a track to start with because whenever you guys rip off the line, your cars go southwards a bit. They, they drop down the bank. Yeah, exactly. And so it's we don't even run a, um, a chicane at wall because it's even worse. But Orlando, you know, you got a little bit of a bank. And, you know, I was trying to to squeeze my way through it. And, you know, I hit the cones. But the whole reason for the restarts is, you know, like if you try and go through too fast or you don't, you know, cut it um, wide enough, you hit a cone, you restart. It's to make it fair for the chase driver. Um, it was the chicane was actually my idea. Like, what? four or five years ago, um, brought it up to FD, trying to figure out how to make, you know, a little bit more of a pace down the straight without doing the pace zone, because that just was really jerky, trying to get cars off the line and working together to get into the first corner. So, yeah, I mean, clearly my strategy was to knock over the cone to allow my tires to cool off uh -huh. so that I could get more grip and they would last longer. Although the competitor's tires, they were under a heat gun, so they just continued <laughs> to build up heat and pressure. And, right, and right, right, right. That's what was the advantage for us. Yeah. So, yeah, so by hitting that cone allows your tires to cool down much faster than the competitor's tire. That's an interesting strategy. Yeah, yeah see, if, if they would have hit a cone as well, then, then their tires would have cooled down. So there's, oh. a, there's ice packed into the cones. So you want to make sure to run it over, you know, let some of that out, gets on your tires, and, you know, it's, it works quite well. <laughs> well, uh, we're uh, happy to finally get some clarification on that issue. So you were intentionally hitting them. And uh, it, it really well, led to your victory the, there. The little, the little spike strips that we put under the cones. You gotta mm -hmm. make sure you hit those. That's how you put holes in your tires. Well, I, I'm <laughs> okay. just, I'm just glad to see you back on the podium. Last time I saw you on the podium was Formula Drift Houston 2001. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It's been a long time, and I know you were there, Corey. I was there was, at that one. That was your first Formula D yeah, event, and yeah. uh, it was. Uh, that was a good time too, but. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about your uh, your path to victory this last weekend. You started out against two. I first ran Vaughn, and the funny part about that was is that you know we were having some issues with our setup. We you know we tried to run a new setup from Long Beach, and it was you know kind of but, uh, fighting us back a little bit. So we ran it all the way through qualifying and decided to. Uh, swap it back to the full Long Beach setup because that, that one was working well. And so we do that all Friday night. And Vaughn was having issues too. He qualified down in the 20s. And so with that, we – it's just funny because both teams were there working till – he left around 11.30. We left around 12.30 or 1. And just to say that it was funny to see both teams putting in so much effort only to know that one of us was going to be going home. So it was yeah. uh, just, you know, you got – a couple dozen guys at the track just like putting it all in for a top 32 battle essentially yeah um, and then uh von punted you a bit there after that restart which was interesting yeah so it was uh, i got an alarm going off um call maximum drift cast i think it said so, <laughs> yeah um but um yeah the other uh yes the the first restart so I was going through, I hit the cone, the restart lights go up, I get out of the gas, and, you know, I start to get on the brake because our cars have a lot of understeer, especially if you don't just flick into the bank. If you don't get those cars settled, they, you know, will tend to understeer. So I did get on the brakes a little too hard to make sure that we didn't wash out and crash our car, um, trying to do a restart. And so Vaughn was just nose to tail, just right on me. And so as soon as I got out of the throttle, he was still in it, and there was just no time, and he bumped into the back of us. Yeah. Um, no serious damage. I mean, you know, our crash bars got dents in them, but, you know, that's what they're there for. And we were able to just pull back around to the start and let it rip. 
Yeah, because Bros driving with Bros, obviously he knows he can initiate an inch off your bumper, but that doesn't leave a lot of room for restart. And I think you had told me after the fact that, like, yeah, you can't, you don't want to go into drift in that moment. First of all, the judges tell you not to slam on your brakes because they don't want to see impacts. But you also don't want to go into drift because you don't want to burn tires. But you also can't just turn at that point because you would just understeer into the wall. So if you kept your speed and didn't at least slow a little bit, you would probably understeer into the wall if you weren't actually in drift. It, it was possible. I mean, like I yeah. said, I probably hit the brakes a little too hard, um, especially given the circumstances. But like you also said, um, Vaughn knows that we're going to both run straight up. So he was just, you know, bumper to bumper ready for it. And so he never saw the restart light. He was just looking at the back <laughs> of the car. So, yeah. as soon as so I got out of the gas and onto the brake, he was already in the back of our car. Well, so. see, that I thought that was part of the strategy, too. You know, you had the cones, the tires, now the brake checking. So is there any yeah. other tricks? I mean, it, it was working out pretty well, no. you know. I was trying to throw all angles at it, so um, some brake checking on the straightaway. Right. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure to, you know, pull the arrow off of the front of his car so that he wasn't as fast. Uh, that seemed right. to work pretty well. Nice, dude. Uh, hitting the cone, letting my tires cool down and tear out all at the same time. You know, all those things. It's Especially just, uh, you it, also want to make sure you hit the cone on the first pass because you just warmed up your tires and oh, they're ready to oh, oh, they want to oh. make sure that they get nice and cold again real quick big balls can you document all that and rec- so we can play back to that again oh i got it okay cool thanks perfect <laughs> Uh, the other thing, too, I was going to ask you, this weekend, it seemed like it didn't start off very easy for you, and it seemed like it was a handful, because we saw your Instagram and Dylan Hughes' Instagram with you guys replacing that motor, and uh, kind of hearing that story leading up all the way to your, you know, standing on top of the podium, it wasn't a very easy weekend for you, it seemed like. No, it definitely wasn't. We wanted to make sure that we had everything in place for Saturday, like I was saying, and so we... We're trying and trying to make the setup work Friday and Thursday. It just wasn't. We are just having some timing issues. And knowing that we had the full Long Beach package as our you know, backup, we just said, you know, screw it. Let's swap it in. We know it works. So, you know, um, why continue chasing ghosts and make sure that we have the best car that we can for Saturday. And it worked. I mean, John Reed was literally on an airplane flying back to California. We get that thing. Uh, ready to start at uh, I think 11:30 or 12, and he's in the air on Wi-Fi, hooked up to our car to make sure that we, uh, you know, had everything in place and lined up, fired it, made sure it ran. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Paco had a little uh, to do with that as well, right, buddy? Hey, I mean, I, I was um, lucky enough <laughs> to be close to a certain part that was missing on, on this puzzle. Just Paco, you know, Paco, Paco carried it across the, the yard line, but I carried it uh, 2,000 miles across the country. But if you want to pick Paco, that's cool. Whatever. Yeah, so Thanks. I, I left my charger for the, the car laptop at RS. Sam actually saw it randomly. I don't even know why or how, but you were like, this looks like mine. And so you asked the group, I said, that's mine, please bring it. You flew in Friday. I was expecting to see you on Friday. Um, but, you know, Sam, he's rolling that rock star life. So he just, you know, cruised in Saturday, has dinner, a couple drinks, goes to bed. And um, so once I realized that I needed, yeah, I see you there. <laughs> once I realized that um, I need that charger, um, I hit up Sam, like, hey, you awake, bud? And... He's like, yeah, I am, but um, Paco looks more excited to go to the track. <laughs> Just well, because so the only difference is that he, he didn't have a shirt on, and I did. And he so. still and hung- I was in bed. <laughs> and you were still hungover from the four butt chugs the night before. Yeah. <laughs> but, but regardless of all things, you could say that you would dedicate your championship to – no, your championship, your, your win this round, your first place in this round to Paco and I. Because without us, it wouldn't have happened, right? Nice. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. There's, There's uh, no other laptop <laughs> chargers to be had. Uh, another computer from the other six guys that was there. Uh, nope. Maybe Bond's team, who was awesome. Nah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was. It all came down to you guys, and you're really. <laughs> uh, Hooray! And Paco, just... can you give a speech since that is Forsberg's trophy? Can you give a speech um, about I wanna, winning? Uh, first of all, I want to thank Corey. Okay. Because uh, thanks to him uh-huh. being sick, unfortunately. Uh, I was the one that took the part, not not wow. Corey. Well, I, I knew that. Well, you. Forsberg called me telling me this was going to happen. Oh, uh, it was part and of the script. It's part of the script. Duh. So I want to thank uh, the Academy. Yep. I want to thank my mom's <laughs> watching. Yep. And um, I want to thank Mitch. 
Yeah. Yeah. Go cause, ahead. Cause, uh, yeah. Thanks, Mitch, because she's always very nice to me. And cool. She took care of me when I had a kidney stone at Long Beach. And I wanna, That's true. I, I want to thank... Uh, this, this, one's, this one's for Sam. I want to uh. thank the Taco Bell menu. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally... What about uh, Bon John or Audio Guy? Well, uh, bon, bon John Joni. Yeah, yeah. yeah that went, obviously, it's, it's implicit. But finally, I want to thank Chris Forsberg. Thanks, Chris. We couldn't, we couldn't have got this without, <laughs> without you. you. You're a small okay. piece of this big thing, and uh, we just have to thank you for being All right, a part focus, of it. Focus, focus, focus. Oh, sorry. Forsberg isn't our uh, primary guest. we got to get to him. We just oh, want to talk to Forsberg about his uh, wonderful weekend here. So we, have, we didn't really get to talk about the Von Battle yet. So Von Battle, what went down? How would you pull out of that one? Um, yeah, I mean, it was, I knew it was going to be close, going to be heads up, and I got to lead first, which is, you know, always nice, so we just went out and just hammered down and had a good uh, gap on him in the second turn, and so we knew we had to drive on him, and so I didn't want to get too um, stuck behind him on the bank, gave him a car length or two around the bank, slowly closed in, and then just um, the, the biggest thing, the way I went out last year was, um, you know, fast forwarding a little bit, essentially what um oslo did with me in the semifinals um just transferring at the wrong time ending up in the wrong part of the track and you know falling back and losing uh proximity through turn two so for me i was just really focused on making sure that i was close enough to the lead car where you know within a car length at uh you know maximum ideally and then having room to be able to surge forward uh, through the smoke, spend you know the least amount of time in the smoke through the transition, being in the right spot of the track to close in and run the last corner, um, you know, tight and right because a lot of guys look like they would get you know a, a really great bank. And then again, this is essentially how James beat Turk was his bank was just that much more impressive than Turk, even though Turk closed them in the final turn. So you know you gotta you know it's, it's a strategy. It's not always the right one, but. Mm. It, is um, getting lost in the smoke and ending up in the wrong part of the track and falling off is definitely worse, in my opinion. So that yeah. was that's that's how we got through uh, Vaughn on that one. So one champion down, top 16, you have Castro, who was kind of the all-star of Orlando last year because he took out yeah. Dean, who uh, that was Dean's first loss in his uh, resurgence back at Formula Drift uh, was to Castro. So Castro, we knew, knows how to handle that track. How did the Castro battle go down? Yeah, and last time I, I ran Castro, it went three times uh in seattle we're just going you know door yeah. neck to neck and you know he's he's a ripper and it, it comes out when you know he's got you know a little confidence behind him and, and a good setup and so i don't know maybe he was just like um a little shaken because they just put a, a brand new motor in the car through halftime and so maybe his setup was just a little off but he just didn't have the speed that i thought he was going to have and i actually made a couple mistakes behind him thinking he was going to I should really turn that alarm off, huh? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck in this call, so it keeps snoozing. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so he he wasn't as fast as I thought he was going to be, and we almost bumped him at the entry. I fell back a little bit, got back up on him by the end of the bank, and we were able to stick with him all the way through the um, the second turn. And then we just kind of walked him in the lead position. So it, um, you know. Felt pretty good to get through him because I thought he was going to be the um, you know the wild card for this event again. Yeah. So one champion, one uh, last year's All Star down. Next, you've got uh, Peter Vinsank. Yeah, Peter. 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 And he, who's who's maybe this year's All Star? He just came off winning uh, Motegi Superdrift twice in a row, yep. and uh, it was actually I think one of my favorites to win the event when we were doing our halftime show. What uh what went down with Peter? That was a pretty insane battle. Yeah, I I was saying the same thing. I was chatting with him during the um the Long Beach Grand Prix and telling him that, you know, his driving was incredible and I thought he was gonna be one of the I mean, not not to say that he's not, he still is very much one of the top yeah. contenders for the season. So I was a little worried. You know, he is super fast and he puts it on the door every time. And so same thing, we just wanted to put down um as quick of a run as we can because he is always on the door of the lead car. I mean, like, to at the um, Motegi event, it was it was nuts. He was just pushing people all over the course, everywhere. So uh, we went out, and like, you know, Scott always tells me, just hit the marks and, you know, keep it high and keep it fast. And That's so, not how he says it. Come on, say how Scott says it. All right, Chris, we're going to have to put it high and put it <laughs> high. 
<laughs> that's right. That's, that's All right. Scott. He, uh, he knows how to call it. So, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we put just lengths on him. He got, you know, same thing, got a little lost in the smoke coming off the bank and just fell back and just wasn't able to close that proximity again. Which then, seemed to be a, a continuous thing for you. What do you think made your car so much faster? Like, and that's why people were coming up with extraordinary, crazy <laughs> ideas. Like, you burned almost everyone in competition uh, before and especially after this. Like, especially at the last um, outer zone. Like, you were just burning people away. What made your car so dialed and so fast? Okay. Um, well, I mean, like I was saying in the last episode that we're on and... Um, just in our posts and everything about the car this year, like when, when we rebuilt the car this off season, it's uh, the most balanced chassis I've ever had, uh, hands down. And yeah. so all the weights are where we want it to be. And it is just feeling more comfortable, um, faster, better side grip, better forward drive um, than any uh, setup that we've had in the past. And so it was um, just a lot to do with, you know, we, had a V8 set up in the past and it was a little nose heavy. And then we tried to do a full revision thinking that it was going to be more balanced last year and it just kind of missed the mark on the build um, with that setup. And so this year it was just like clean slate. We ripped everything out of the car, front to back, top to bottom. We we're able to uh, move the engine back. We moved a lot of other things around and we got, um, you know, the, the weight pretty much perfect. Uh, yeah. exactly what we want the numbers to be. Yeah. It was awesome to, to watch. And then uh, we have Osbo next, which, uh, you know, we're probably not going to be talking to that guy in 10 minutes. So, you know, say whatever you want about him. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, me and Osbo has obviously run a ton of times. And he's definitely a lot uh, smoother in, in these past few years. Like, you know, we went back and forth a bunch in, you know, 13, 14. And, you know, there's, there was like a bunch of random calls. Um, that like, you know, I didn't agree with some and Chris I've had his run ins with him, but I will say that he um, is driving super straight up and you know, at Long Beach he was killing it and here he was just killing it and um, you know, definitely uh, like this um, you know, the the way he's been ripping that Corolla. So he was doing really well and we knew it. So same thing, just trying to keep up, trying to put it on the door and we were he he had the best run on us in the chase position and so we get the one more time. I had a big mistake. Same thing. I was coming down for the entry and I was on the, the low side. I didn't go nose to tail. I went, you know, side by side. And so when I kicked the clutch and we, you know, go to get up into the bank, I got kind of stuck in the middle of the bank and the car was just super loaded up, gripped up, and I couldn't really work it up the bank. And so uh, big mistake on my part, but we we're able to put some distance down on them in the lead position and the judges gave us a, you know, um, a full one more time call. So we went back to the pit and, you know, they're pitting right next to us. We see them, you know, changing tires and, you know, the, we physically see them cranking more grip into the car. So we're like, oh, you know, they're bringing it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we crank a little more grip into our car and, um, and we go out there and this time I go nose to tail, um, you know, like pull up the bank and go bumper to bumper, like how Vaughn did with us. And we flick in, we're able to stay high and we followed them down into turn one into the, um, uh, first inner clip and same thing transfer through got through the smoke and and push them through the finish line and in our lead position um that was when like i talked about earlier he transferred to early he got on the inside of the track put three wheels off and it was unanimous and win oh yeah and then the big dreaded james dean the uh the the name that strikes fear into the hearts of all drifters and form of the drift when they confidence this guy what was your thoughts going into that battle uh, same thing, man. Like we, at this point, we're just feeling, you know, unstoppable rock solid. We knew the car was fast. We knew we could keep up with anybody. And so it was just a matter of getting into the track with these guys. And, you know, we had, um, uh, same thing, like a car length or so going around the bank, trying not to, you know, stuff ourselves and make a big mistake. So do that as we're coming off the bank, we were up on his door and, and in a, a good position, almost too close. It was almost like the closest I ran through inner one on anyone. <laughs> We got a little um, step back as we, you know, break transferred back on the throttle, but um, we were able to get back up on the door and, and push through the finish line. So that part felt great. And we go back through for our uh, immediate tire cooling, uh, pressure dropping, uh, <laughs> uh, cone restart. So yep. 
on, which uh, uh, which that code hit. Uh, we we did document physical proof that the uh, unfortunately FD team put a GoPro on the side of your car, and that extra six inches was enough to uh, nail a code. And yeah, that that started that restart. Yeah, at the end of it, um, Jared's like, "Oh, I can't wait to take a gram," but I was actually taking a picture of the Go um, or uh, Blackview camera that was flipped um, vertically or parallel to the ground, I should say, because um, yeah, the cone whacked it, um, or at least it obviously appears that way. So it was uh, facing forward on the first run, and then it was all of a sudden facing up right after we hit the cone. So um, yeah, we go through, come back around get the restart and take off into turn one. We had um, a little bit of a, a gap on James Dean. And, you know, I, I really wish that he was able to, you know, get through the course, but he had a power steering malfunction and crashed the car. So we, we really wanted to get just a full fledged uh, run with him and get a good win. But either way, you know, when it comes to drifting, yeah. you, you can get it. Yeah. But uh, it was cool to see you, uh, didn't jump out of your car and celebrate. You drove right over to James, made sure he was okay. And then uh, it was fun to see James hop in your car as you guys drove to the uh, front of the crowd to uh, get the announcement for victory. So that was fun to see uh, took, you know, the sportsmanship. Took, took James to a little donut ride. Yeah, and then yeah. seeing three, three champions doing uh, donuts around uh, around that area was, was super awesome to see. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, as, as soon as I'm, like, barely clear in the last corner, like, as soon as I cross the finish line, Scott's, you know, screaming over the radio, like, like we just won, you know. And as I'm, like, you know, coming back that way, I see, you know, the trucks, James, and everything in the wall. They, like, had started going out already. So I just immediately get on the radio. I was like, like, like yeah, was that our fault? And, uh, you know, knowing that James is super close to us, or, like, assuming that James is super close to us. And... He's like, no, oh, no, like car broke or something. Like just he, he went in all on his own, and I was like, oh, jeez. And so I um, just shot over there, jumped out, and he was already getting out of his car. So he seemed all right, and the same thing. I was like, like I'll just go ahead and get that snooze one more time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, same thing. Just ran over and was just like, y'all good? Like you know my fault there he's like nah power steering went out and just couldn't handle it and it uh you know went up and in so it was uh felt obviously felt great to get a win it's unfortunate he had to crash his car but um you know like i said it's uh in in this game it's first mistake is you know the first out so there's no no room for mistakes out there yeah and i'm sure this is not the last time you're going to be facing probably any of these guys these are going to be some common battles for you throughout the remainder of the season i imagine so uh, for those still wanting to see a Forsberg-Dean battle fully fleshed out, I do not doubt we will be revisiting that at more rounds to come. Oh, yeah. Um, any other facts, points, anything you want to get across before we uh, let you go? Um, not really. Um, I, just, I, have, I do have a quick question for you. Dinner, I, I do so. have a quick question for you, just real quick. <laughs> How do how'd you make your car so fast in the later half of the course? Was there something you changed to set up that way? Was that... Just your driving? Was that just a strategy? Save the tires for the last half while everybody burned them off in the bank? Was there uh, something um, behind it's, that? It's 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 literally a little bit of everything. Um, so there's no real easy way to put it other than, you know, we we know that that course is a tire burner. So you know, we try and be smart with our um, tire usage and try and be smart with uh, you know how we warm them up. And also in the setup of the car, you know, trying to put as much grip in, you know, in certain places. And so, and then also just uh, trying to make sure you're putting the car on the right line, not getting, um, you know, too far into the paint or up on the banking. And so, yeah, it's, uh, consistency allows you to gather data to find out, you know, how to make the car the best that it can be. And so we, um, you know, it, it felt great. And like I said, we, when we rebuilt the car, we got the balance exactly where I wanted it to be. Um, it was a number that I've been trying to hit for the three years. And so once, uh, you know, me and old D-Dog ripped that thing apart and, and started over, we, we freaking nailed it. So car feels awesome. awesome better than ever. That and speed holes. Yep. Yeah. Strictly speed holes. It's, it's <laughs> speed holes. Nice. Yeah. And, that, yeah, well, uh, and before be, that guy on the grassy knoll out at uh, Atlanta, so we get the same advantage. So. Yeah, that is nice. Super yeah. quick, and I, I remember uh, some people mentioning on the comments, but your car smells different. Like what kind of fuel you're running? Because it has a very particular smell. Uh, we run VP Import, so it's like the um, 
I, it's essentially the best non-alcohol fuel that VP makes. And so it uh, feels great, burns great, makes a lot of power, keeps the engine running cool. So it's, um, yeah, it's awesome. What's the octane? Um, don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> Four, <laughs> like, like yeah, 20, seven. Like 87. So that's better, just slightly better. better 87, than like a nice California 87. <laughs> yeah, that's a Circle K. Uh, and it runs quality. that good and mm. cold. Thank you, VP. Yeah. <laughs> now, it does smell very characteristic. I noticed that, but um, I mean, more people did. But anyways, mm -hmm. yeah, dude, like, looks like the car is running great. Unicorn Garage just chimed in. He says it's 120 octane. Thank you, Unicorn I, I, Garage. I was going to say 120, but I didn't want to misquote it. So Yeah, they'll and never be wrong. 16, the, the well, Forsberg 16 is actually 117, oddly enough. Um, and then I think Q is just above that, and then import is just above that. So, awesome. Oh, yeah, man. Well, uh, super excited to see you on the podium again after 55 years on, not on the podium. Yeah. You know. No, it's been. I, I can't believe the last time I was four years old. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Don't let it. Don't let it be another century again. I'm 1897. Last time you're on the podium, it was crazy. But uh, just don't let it be that long. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds good, guys. Well. uh uh, yeah, I'll let you guys go. Sounds like you got um, bigger, more important people to talk to. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely do. Uh, <laughs> all right, fuck you, Chris Forsberg. Uh, see, you, see you at work tomorrow. <laughs> all right, yeah, I'll see you at work, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye. All right. Later, buddy. See you guys. Later. This guy's a real. Oh, is he still on the phone? Hold on. No, no, so oh, we have to yeah. make sure that he's gone. Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, shut up, <laughs> Brian. Brian, are we clear? Uh, yes. No. Is, yes. is he no, gone? Hold on. No. Make him go. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, yeah. oh, oh my God! Hey, he's still here. Brian, hang. Make up. him go fast, away. Fast. Cut he's gonna guys. keep telling us speed oh, secrets. Oh, Brian, cut the cord. <laughs> Man, what else is he gonna talk about? He talked about his championships and winning, and I don't know how much yeah. more I could take of that. Sam, how many times have you won? Four score and seven years ago was his <laughs> last championship, <laughs> and uh, he, the joke that the origin of that joke is, of course. Uh, uh, Jared on the podium saying something. It wasn't like disrespectful in my opinion too much, but it was just like, wow, Chris, it's been a really long time. But it's like he was he was very recently on the podium. But what, he, what I think he was trying to get across was that Chris was always the bridesmaid, never the bride. In other words, he got a lot of second and third places. He, hadn't, he actually hadn't won an event since yeah, 2014. Yeah, and, and he was, he was actually wearing white. He did win two championships in that time, which is crazy, but not winning an actual round, which was equally crazy. But... It was, uh, yeah, I guess he was wearing white. That's it is true. He was the bride wearing white. Yeah, he white was finally the, the bride. Temporary race suit there. But yeah, um, I would say let's wrap up the show without calling our next <laughs> guest and so on. Let's just end the show as we do. Yeah, what, what, did, what did Osbo tell us to tell his fans? Uh, he, he was mentioning something about he was going to a sauerkraut festival and that if you want to want to see him, you can head out to Orlando. He's still there. He's in Orlando. Uh, his address is uh, going to be on the stream in a second, as well as his social security number. If you uh, are interested in Freddie's social security, it's coming up. Hey, Dean Kearney says, uh, sup, boys. What's up, Dean? Hey, Dean. What's going on? Uh, Dean Kearney was uh, during uh, our halftime show. We awarded him the, uh, the next entire most interesting moment. Uh, his battle with Alex, Hel Alex Helburn was absolutely nuts. Um, it's like it was cool to see Dean come back from not actually running yeah. around in uh, Long Beach because of engine problems. Yeah. To uh, he was looking. To just well, it's finally nice to see him leave his little Irish dinger on the yeah. track. I said his car looks like a soap bar. A soap bar, so yeah. like a round, yeah. squared oh. soap bar. Uh oh. Yep. Uh oh. And Who's the guy that drove you're the wrong guy. Oh, there he is. Uh oh. Uh, I don't know. I mean, is, is did it you the call Chris back? Oh. <laughs> oh no, he oh, actually. My God. I, I think uh -oh. these gentlemen called us. No, we had Chris come back for a second. Oh my God, that would have been <laughs> that would have been terrible. And we would have won another forty-five minutes. Separate Osbo and Chris. I, I really guys hate Skype. Each other's throats since I like hate 2014. Skype so much. <laughs> it's the... What's going on, guys? Who no, is this? Well, we just got off the phone with Forsberg. He had nothing but great things to say about you. Um, yeah, and just wish you best of luck in the future. He also said that he could spank you in a in a mud bath wrestling <laughs> match. If and you guys ever wanted to do that? Yeah, and he can beat you in a kissing contest. So. Mm -hmm. um. I, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. <laughs> he also said that even though you're trying to grow at that little hairy patch in your chin, <laughs> it's not going to tickle his face too much. So he'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, this is all the beer that I can grow. Like, I still have this, like, teenager kind of, like, yeah. 
Maybe that's not true. If you're trying to grow like a Jack Sparrow beard, like a Pirates of the Caribbean beard, like when you, do you, does it come in like that, like mischievous, mischievous, and like the soul patch and the mustache, or do you grow like a full idiot beard like me? Uh, it's more like an idiot beard, I think. Okay. Well, I mean, you're a Viking. You should have a big Norse beard. You would. Think. I know, and I, I, I must have fell into some some nasty poison or something as yeah. a kid because I, I just can't grow it. It hmm, sucks. Well, well, you can borrow some of mine. You you're definitely great sure. part. You're definitely nailing the vanilla eyes. Yeah, it's sharp. Uh, yeah, the, the little, the little, there you go. Mm, 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 do, 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 do. My my mm, girlfriend mm, Hunter mm, was bidding on or looking for some uh, vanilla eyes jackets hair. for for Halloween last year. Oh, there you year. go. You know, the American flag Excuse jacket, or, you know. Do you know the lines? Uh, All right, stop. Congratulate on yeah. the lesson. Right, get it. Paco, finish the song. <laughs> we should you do, do it. Finish it in Espanol. <laughs> Oh, dude, that would be cool. Actually. That would be like, cool. Like... We did a vanilla ice remix in Espanol. Yeah, yeah. Apreciar y deme comer. Ah, shit. Ooh, that's oh, terrible. I got a that little was... bit lost. All right, now, Freddy, now, Freddy, finish the song in Norse. Norse code. Uh, What song? Uh, ice oh, Ice Baby. Baby. All right, let's just talk about drifting. This is boring. <laughs> God damn it. I wanted to hear the... I will say this, though. I have experienced walking into a plane with a girl uh, or a lady sitting in one of the, the front rows and she would stare me down like that. And as I walked past her, she was like, are you, an, are you Vanilla Ice? <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. And I continued on to the back of the plane where my seat was. <laughs> that if happened to me, me once, but they thought that I was uh, Bruce Willis. They, uh, Richard, I can Richard see that. Gere? No? Richard Gere? <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, that happened yeah, to I... me too, Sam, but they uh, thought I was Sloth from the Goonies. Yeah, I've seen that before a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. Way, Freddie keeps on calling me Richard Gere, and I don't like it. I feel like he's implying that I put hamsters in my butt. <laughs> Wait. I didn't know he did that. I, it's, you know, it's, an, it's an urban legend or a myth or whatever you want to call it. I don't think you can even put a hamster in your butt. But, I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, I'm more thinking about the, the Julia Roberts. What's that, what's that movie? Pretty yeah. Woman? Uh, yeah, that's, it's a compliment. It's it? as a compliment. I'm a pretty lady. Do you stick no. gerbils up your butt? But you, you'd have you and Julie Roberts would make a great couple. How about yeah. that? Stan would be, uh, Sam would I call or, it Sam Stan, but Sam should be in a movie with Julia Roberts called Lady in the Tramp Stamp. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. All right, I'm into that. Sounds. Uh, so you guys were on the phone with Freddie uh, a couple episodes ago for our, like quick variety show before the uh long beach season i imagine you talked about his new uh ride a little bit but let's let's rehash that so freddie once again brand new car for the season one that you had not driven previously and that wasn't made to be a drift car to begin with and right off the bat you won an event with it how uh talk us through the steps from day one where i imagine you know, you and Steven Papa Mama Kisses were like, hey, let's choose the best car available for drifting. And he's like, all right, let's get a new Corolla. And then why, did, it. why did Osbo or Papa Dacus sound like Bill Clinton, Sam? Hey, uh, hey, listen up here, Freddie. Oh, we're going to be buying ourselves a Corolla. And we're going to win Long Beach. <laughs> <laughs> I've never built a Corolla. Uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I did not have sexual relations in the back seat of that Corolla. <laughs> um, yeah. But... So you guys, you guys built a difficult car again, and and we we know, of course, it be well, because it's for an activation, and it's cool for Toyota to show off this cool new Corolla, but not a car that was intended for drifting in the gods of cars when they were creating the car. As this little baby car didn't have rear wheel drive. Right. So long story short, the whole uh, journey of starting with that Scion TC or the TC2 and uh, then building last year's Corolla and then this year's Corolla hatchback, it's all been a blessing in disguise because these are seemingly not good for drifting, being front wheel drive cars, not looking like a traditional drift car, all this stuff. But what we've learned over these years is that the subframe and the suspension design is actually really good. And that's what really matters when it comes to making a drift car work. So, you know, on the outside, this is obviously a step in trying to, you know, promote the new Toyota cars. There's already three uh, 86s in the in the sport, so Toyota doesn't need to push that car anymore. Mm. Uh, but underneath it all, it's actually a really good chassis. Yeah. And I, I think the closest car 
basically the suspension design is very similar to a BMW E46 and you know with our uh, Latvian friend showing how well those cars drift mm. you know it's it, it is a really good drift car period yeah i mean we would we would definitely be talking shit on it if it wasn't <laughs> the most winningest car of the 2018 season right now so i mean you are showing that this car that we wouldn't think conventionally drifts uh it can drift not only well but incredibly well i just I, once, on sorry. on that sam i just want to know why toyota keeps choosing you as kind of like the test dummy you know, obviously, there's quite a few Toyota drivers. Who's like, you know, let's just give it to Osbo again. He can try. Probably it because out. apparently, apparently, he, he can, can handle make, it. He can make any car look good while, while drifting. But what do you I think guess, the result so. would be if like somebody else on Toyota got that type of project? What do you think would the outcome would be? It'd be You're interesting. Saying, like Gucci, because Gucci's oh, no good. Like even if Gucci got it, Turk got it. Uh, Castro oh, got would, it. Turk would face plant into a wall, head head first. <laughs> no. Yeah, but okay. I mean, but I mean, Papadakis has experience of making these front wheel drive cars into rear wheel drive successfully yeah. so i guess that makes sense my question would be though but Os- Os- is that would you okay. agree with that osbo or what why why do you keep getting dish these new cars and nobody else they're not really giving it to me right they're giving them to steph yeah. um and if you look at steph's history it's always been all about going against the stream and doing something unconventional and building honda drag cars at a time and no one really thought that was possible and stuff like that. So he has a history of, of making stuff like that happen and making it work. And, uh, you know, when Toyota has a project like that, of course, they're, they're going to look in that direction. Um, and, you know, I, I would love to see all of us four Toyota dudes in different cars. Imagine a Camry, you know, um, an 86, MR2. of course. MR2. Maybe there's a <laughs> oh, new Toyota yeah. sports car, you know, no. come out in the future. And, you know, all of these things to see. To, I'm all for more diversity. And for, uh, that's what we're trying to do, right? Real quick, uh, sorry, before you go on, Paco. Mm-hmm. Freddie, you keep on using the name Steph. Who's that? Uh, Stephanie? We, we all have Ooh, nicknames. Yeah, Stephanie Papadakis. We, we call him Stephanie sometimes. Is, what's his last name? Papa Mama Kisses. No, okay, thank you. I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. It's Continue. so funny. So when we're at the shop in California, and I try and tag the shop, there's a Papadakis Tavern uh, yeah. nearby. So I always tag the tavern. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we, th- those guys actually ha- have quite deep and quite dark humor sometimes, and I think it's yeah. rubbing off sometimes. And I, I wish I could uh, let you guys in on some of that. But they, they can be quite harsh oh no we're ready if you want to tell us some harsh stuff <sighs> sorry it doesn't fly <sighs> it's not fit for work right so we got to get you a couple a couple uh pints of Michelob ultra whatever you drink deep yeah sure i, I mean <laughs> i have my holiday ink up here what am i actually drinking you wouldn't know what is, i'm sure it's norwegian it's like probably like fermented uh fish guts right uh it's probably crunk yeah. juice crunk juice? purple play- drink you got yeah, some but, get some robot tested in there. I am in Florida. It's for loco. <laughs> no, Florida that man, you're gonna be the new Florida man on the uh, newspaper covers tomorrow. <laughs> Florida man not. drinks too much cough syrup, flips over Toyota Corolla in fifth <laughs> joy. Oh boy! Oh my God! Yeah, I'm in Daytona Beach right now, so I'm uh, staying here in uh, Florida, um, in between Orlando and Atlanta. And the goal is to try and drive on the beach tomorrow and awesome. uh, see what kind of top speed we can get with our Camry rental. Is there an event there, or do you just get to do that on Daytona Beach? It, what I'm doing is just I'm, I have a big backlog of emails through, so I'm just being here, and I have, I guess, a workation, seemingly a vacation, but I'm really working. Yeah. And uh, what are you doing up until Atlanta? Are you workcationing the whole time? Do you have any other big plans? So we may be going back down to Orlando Speed World, hang out with a couple of friends uh, at the track. Um, and, you know, I, I, gotta, I have some stuff I got to do. I got to install a radio kit and a helmet. I got to pick up some race parts that I'm shipping to Europe. So there's all these little things, but... Uh, it's it's nice to have a little bit of time away from cars every now and then. Oh yeah, definitely. 
Um, yeah. Before you guys went back to Orlando and Florida and all that stuff, <laughs> I was kind of want uh, want to go back real quick to the the choosing the cars uh, for instead of the Corolla. There's, uh, I mean, I, I was very, um, I couldn't believe it until I saw it, but there was a Toyota CHR at Long Beach that was like slammed with cool wheels and all that. I think it looks a lot cool in comparison to, uh, I mean, uh, Brian is showing us some. Just show some more photos, Brian. Well, like, just like to give some examples. So that car, Turk had one of those uh, the other day. It was like a Toyota black one. He was in town and they actually look really cool. Like, yeah, it looks like, pretty I'm cool. I'm not a huge fan of the Nissan Juke or any like kind of crossover truck car thing. But something about the lines on that are actually pretty sweet. There's like a black one, uh, <laughs> Brian, that has like like cool wheels that's like slammed. It's like, yeah. I mean, it, it looks pretty cool. So, I think it looks better than the Corolla. But I mean, what do you think? So we, it's funny you guys say that. So we've been talking about uh, doing something along those lines. Imagine a four-seater, something like that. And what's interesting is that that car has that new TNGA platform, the Toyota New Generation architecture, which is the same or pretty much exactly the same subframes as the Corolla. So that could easily have been made into a drift car. Mm. Nice. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely something we've been talking about, but as of right now, all our, it probably wouldn't have been as good of an FD car as the, as the hatchback, because that hatchback is low, it's lighter, uh, all these things, but the CHR would be a dope. Uh, yeah. Imagine a grid life car or a golf to car, or like a ride along. Oh, like a four seater. You know? That'll be cool. And right? only because I want to get in before the thousands of Instagram comments that all say the same thing. Ask the question, you know, 2019 Toyota's maybe making like, like another car. They, it's like kind of like an older car that they made, but a new version that, that is, is you Actually, know, there's been similar a to it. Similar to a drift car you started driving. There's been a lot of those okay. driving around on, on uh, anti-spy rap. Yeah, like, is there any chance you might be Probably driving one of those. I think Pogba said <laughs> hentai-spy rap. <laughs> That's like my favorite kind chance. of rap. Yeah, hentai-spy any, rap. <laughs> any chance you could uh, be uh, doing uh, one of them? No, lips are zipped. He's all right, for this our audio only listeners. He's zipping lips, so that means no. That means he's never. He just uh, he just sign language. He's self he sign language. To Toyota Supras are stupid. He, he pleased the fifth. So guys, so guys. First and foremost, I have no idea what you're talking about. And secondly, mm -hmm. I may or may not have been invited to an event in September where uh, someone will be may or may not be talking about something <laughs> along the lines of what you're talking about. That's a spicy news bomb, Freddie. Spicy Freddy. hot. <clears throat> Stay like that. Oof. Well, we'll Paco's no doubt tearing talk up to over you here. Again <laughs> when uh, when that that time comes in which you can say more about that thing, which must not be spoken about. Well, I so it, it's it is maybe one of the not, not the worst kept secret, but th there is something brewing, right? And. Honestly, we don't know exactly what it's going to be. We don't know exactly where a car like that would be pushed. Uh, but, you know, we all saw the, the Supra concept at Geneva, and the car looks amazing. Um, it's It looks to be quite small. It would be an ideal FD car. We all know that. Um, and, you know, we are, of course, looking into all of these things. Mm -hmm. But it's way too early to say, and there's a lot of marketing decisions. And there's where I think I'm really fortunate is that I'm I don't only do stuff here in the states. I also right. do a lot of drifting in Europe. And with this car being a European baby, right? Yeah. Um, maybe that can help open some doors. So yeah, we, we just gotta wait and see. One way or the other, I imagine you'll be sitting in the pilot seat of one of those at some point. <laughs> That's pretty safe <laughs> to say. Plot twist, it's a Camry. Plot twist, 2019. It's a good time. You know, I'd, uh... it's, it's yeah, a, it's, I mean, yeah. It's a rebatch Volkswagen Passat with a V8. Mm. But I feel like it wouldn't really matter because uh, he would still rip it and uh, get first place victories and all that. So, yeah. Moving I, on. Of course. <laughs> there's a lot of... I Like, this year and, and leading the championship at this point, I was definitely not expecting that. And you can ask Steph 
any of the guys on, on our team. I don't think they were. It, it's it's a it's a all bets were against us simply because it's a brand new car. And if you look at how Dean dominated last year, I knew that Forsberg and Turk were going to be way more competitive once they got on the next entire. Like, there's so many good drivers out there and and mm. cars. So, like, to be able to be leading right now, it's 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 really, it really wasn't something that we expected or. Funny, you know. funny thing is that you said the exact same thing last year, after after winning Long Beach in the I am. Mm -hmm. Like, oh no, we weren't we expecting it. He didn't win Long Beach. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't no. win. Dean but won. we did win Orlando. Oh, sorry, yeah. but but just I mean, wait, what what position what position did you finish uh, Long Beach last year? Uh, fifth. Okay, but maybe maybe it was uh, yeah after after we second round or something. Though, yeah. Okay, yeah, but anyways, yeah, I mean, you still like. Uh, but, but but it's not something I just say. It's something that I mean because it. it Doing that in a new chassis, it's tricky. And these cars are, they're good in a lot of respects, but the IM, especially last year's car, was really tippy. It was really tall. It had really high center of gravity. You could tell that, you know, if you look at that car against, let's say, Castro's car, I think Castro's car is a lot better in many respects because uh -huh. it has a really low center of gravity, much more efficient. So to make that IM work and for us to... To pull off that win in Orlando last year was, I, th I think that was a bigger feat pr probably than our win in Long Beach this year. Well, that's uh, one thing. And since you did bring up Castro's car, you did drive that at the tire test. What did you think about driving that versus your car now? I kind of, you know, you gave a little example of the IM, but driving the FRS, which I'm assuming is pretty consider, uh, pretty similar to your TC in a sense. What was it like driving the FRS versus this car now? So I have an FRS in Europe, right? Which right. Uh, which has a 2J. And right. you would maybe think that Castro's car and that 86 would be very similar. But they felt totally different. And Castro's car is so light and it, it has so little weight over the nose that, you know, accelerating out of turns, it's almost like the front end gets light. It's almost like it... it it rips a wheelie right. and it's an interesting feeling and it drives very different differently from the 86 and very differently from the tcs and the corollas and the and the and the hatchback so it's like that car is it, i think that car is probably one of the best chassis in the sport right now because it's really light and you, you'd be able to have a really low center of gravity especially with the light motor and without as much grip that we're running in these cars now more these aspects are increasingly important these cars are turning more and more into classic race cars where low center of gravity and these things are really key interesting interesting it, and, and you know if you if you're not like to orlando this weekend if you look at uh, forsberg and how those guys nailed it I, and i say they nailed it because they they really took that tire made the most of it they had the fastest car by far and chris had the ability of, to still drive that car in the really wide outer line this is i predict this is going to be the next level in fd more and more grip yeah and more and more speed well, look, so let's yeah. talk about that because yeah, exactly. uh because chris will only reveal so much to us because he doesn't want to tell every tuning setting everything and your other you know in your in your competitor's eye from another team why is his car so fast why was he beating everyone's ass including yours you know not to be rude or anything but like he was beating everyone's ass around the uh the second half of the track why was that car so fast it's a, it's a combination of and and I really think that tire the Nexen tire is better um, yeah. than what they had and Chris and Scott those guys are Chris is one of the most maybe the most passionate most driven drivers and one of the most skilled drivers in the series right so I I, I think it's it's classic race car thinking where you w work out how to maximize your grip with anti-squat you know maybe tire pressures sway bars all these things where you have a lot of jacking maybe it's it's all about having the biggest contact patch and and 
and shooting the tires into the, the ground uh, when you need it. And the Orlando track is very special because it's it's a very loose track, meaning that the mechanical grip you can have in the car is more important. Um, mm. And and those guys did an excellent job of maximizing that. And you know, hats off to them. And it was really cool seeing Chris back on that top spot after his struggles the last year and, and even the year before. And when they announced Chris at the winner down the, uh, at the center of the track, Chris was shaking. It meant so much <laughs> to know. him. That, in that passion, it's, it's really freaking cool to see that. Yeah. And That's so, so awesome to hear you say that, to hear Dean say that, to hear, to hear everyone say that, because, yeah, it's, uh, you know, he, he tries a lot harder than uh, many people whatever guess and, and maybe if you did guess you, you still wouldn't understand as far as uh how passionate he is actually about being competitive in the sport so it was definitely a good sight to see and awesome that you could be so humble about it freddie because i know obviously you're out there to win as well but well another thing but, but you know ahead, th- th- this if you look at f1 i think there was an uh, episode recently with lewis hamilton and um uh Fettel in melbourne and there was some bickering back and forth and then fettel said dude lewis at the end of the day we're doing this because it's fun and it's the same obviously the same thing in our sport as well you know it's, i think we all have a lot of respect for each other even though fans or other people may make it seem like we don't there is a lot of respect out there you know we had our qualifying result on friday where we qualified number one which has been a long time since we did last time and he may not even have been right. I think I still think James had a better call. But that aside, Jr. was like, "Dude, congrats!" And mm-hmm. Ford and Toyota, you know, it's uh, we, in a sense we're not supposed to be friends, right? But underneath mm-hmm. it all, I think we all have a lot of respect for each other. So, and, and it, it's yeah. good to see that. Which. Yeah, I had almost forgotten about your 99-point qualifying session. I don't remember if ever in my time in the sport has there been a 99-point qualifying run before. The judges were really about that run you did. Yeah, and I I think it was a, a good run, but I also think James was uh, deeper on the bank. He had a harder transition, but the, the perhaps the slight issue with the qualifying judging is that even if you're call it a half a foot or a foot off the wall, you still get max points, meaning that if you go deeper, there's no bonus for that. Right. So 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 that's why we got full we got full score there and the only point we were deducted was off of the second inner clip. Um but I personally think that maybe the bar is set a little bit too low because now mm-hmm. you have a lot of guys creeping up close to the hundred point run. Yeah, I think uh I've got the list next to me somewhere, but it was crazy to see that uh like the top 16 drivers were all around 90 or above which is not right. usual for at least what we remember seeing a few years ago and one thing that we've mentioned on our on our uh, am and takes halftime show and and have mentioned in years past too is that with the design of your car your rear bumper if you even want to call it that is directly behind your wheels so when you tap wall you are like a foot further back than someone else and when you're a foot off the wall that's like james dean's tap zone so that's that's one thing to consider when watching your car so if someone complains that like oh freddie was a foot off the wall compared to james it's like no your wheels were probably just about the same proximity to the wall it's just you had this little mama hatch and that is a real disadvantage you know and the the car doesn't have a lot of disadvantages but that is a real one and in long beach as i was trying to figure out the limits i i had like one of those wall burnouts Mm-hmm. You know, when, when you're you're yeah. in so deep that you're, your tires yeah. hitting the wall. Yeah. And uh, it's it's tricky. Um, it's really tricky. Uh, and it's, you know, split second decisions and all this stuff. But and the wider the car gets too, the worse it gets. Right. Because now your your wheel sticks out further and further and further. And you're you bend your your wheel before you hit hit the bumper, basically. So it's uh, it's pretty tricky so so you know maybe we got to come up with a beautiful long uh optional (laughs) rear bumper or something i don't know so paco i believe you bought some sort of tail items before haven't you a what sorry some tails like you know about tails putting tails on stuff so if he had like a little tail in his car yeah (laughs) yeah he can get it off a wish (laughs) i like that Mm mm-hmm 
like the, <laughs> the, the chicken car or the hot dog car with like the yeah yeah <laughs> or there's actually I think your car would be closer to the exterminator car like they had the like the mouse exterminator <laughs> one that had like a Nolan. big mouse tail in the back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hunter actually said that. My girlfriend, your car looks like so. But, but anyway, we. <laughs> uh, if you look back, you, if you remember um, De- Darren McNamara's car and Reese Millen's car is back in the day, the Saturn, Saturn Sky and the Solstice, they both mm-hmm. built these like little box sections that came out. And Mad Mike had, had these little fins that came far out. So maybe, mm-hmm. you know, we do something like that or, you know, we'll just run it the way it is. It and- like, yeah, it seems like you're doing pretty fine with the way it is as long as uh, we'll keep we'll keep fighting the uh, good PR fight that uh, you're closer to the wall than you seem when. Uh... Oh, yeah. uh, I did. Uh, I mean, we um, we did install a set of uh, curve feelers on Taylor Hall's Cadillac mm-hmm. with a uh, with a couple of dices on the on the front. Cur- I mean, on, on the end of on the curve tip. Curve feelers. Yeah, curve feelers. Oh, the, oh, I see. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't know what those were either, actually, because I'm not 80 and own a Cadillac. Yeah. But apparently, they're ways for you to not scratch your rams on your caddy when you're uh, parking next to a curb. So uh, yeah, we can maybe get some kind of like curve feelers on your on your sure. feeler bumper, so you can you'll hear it. I mean, sorry, for huh? Yeah, we can do that. Or the the new Corolla comes with the lane departure assist. Oh, so maybe you know, I can radar? just activate that and it'll stay within the lanes. Or maybe I have you, activated it already. Use actual what? actual radar to know how close uh, temp, the the wall is getting. Dude, is is that something that would be against any like any regulation? Use proximity Probably. sensors, like an audible proximity sensor when you're within a yeah, certain yeah. Of the wall. Yeah, so you send like dolphin yeah. sonar at the wall, and then it bounces back, and then it indicates you in your helmet. <laughs> That'd be pretty tricky. Yeah. That, it's probably also, doable. That's the worst dolphin impression I've ever heard. Oh, <laughs> you should have seen the movements. <laughs> yeah, you, Paco is just having a full meltdown over here. Right, you guys let's focus it. on that. Let's do that dolphin impression real quick. And get Paco, the camera on Paco again yeah, so we can see Paco's movement. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a horse dolphin. <laughs> wait, wait, hold we'll on, hold on. Oh, hold on, Paco's going to do... Yeah. Okay, hold on, he's getting in position, guys. He's backing up. He's doing... <laughs> he did some, some nice head bobbing. How about uh, off topic here? Give him a fish. A, Give Os- this man a fish. Hold on, Oz breaking out the whole uh, studio. I know you like spending time in the ocean because you are a, a, a part Aquaman. Uh, did you see that video <laughs> flying around of that dude on like the stand-up board getting speared by the dolphin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got <laughs> he got knocked off like yeah, body cool. slam. That's by, what. Uh, watching Paco reminded me of that video. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny because that happens. Is we're watching our own live stream, which is like delayed like five seconds. <laughs> I just saw myself <laughs> doing that. Yeah. You remind me of a dolphin that jumped down a hill. Uh, but uh, uh, I want to get back on uh, the driving topic now because yeah. think about when you first drive, started driving in Formula Drift. I think Forsberg said he started driving in Formula Drift in 1999. You probably started in 2002. Uh, um, and that, that's, that's facts with Forsberg, but mm-hmm. when you were driving Chucky, you know, tire consumptions obviously was much different then versus now, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sure thinking about conserving tires wasn't so much a strategy then, right? And now totally. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you, you look at this and you kind of already mentioned that tire strategy or conserving that or learning to turn it on or turn it off so you can kind of save the tire for the second run. But is there other things that you think people are doing like... You know, and there's some cases where there's dudes out there that obviously make a thousand horsepower, seven hundred horsepower. Are these cars nowadays, and I just don't know this, that's why I'm asking, have adjustability? Obviously you can't have, you know, your inline four running full kill twenty four seven. You might, you might not. And there's some other guys that have the ability to ju- a dial down power. Is that things that people are doing kind of nowadays or uh I'm sure they are. I mean we we run a smaller turbo in Long Beach, for instance, than we do at the rest of the tracks. But we we still have a gas pedal, right? So that would be your uh, your regulator right there. Um, so having a thousand horsepower on tap doesn't mean you always need it. Um, and you know, our plan of attack is to try and have the power we need, but not any more than that. There's no point in having. Uh, more than a thousand horsepower at most of the tracks, uh, simply because the tires won't last. And what you said about the tires is, is so true because drifting has gone from trying to go through a, a tire as quickly as it can to now trying to save the tire for as long as you can. Right. Uh, so it's quite a different sport now. You know, with the the cars are 
cra crazy, right? Like the fir my first drift car had probably 200 horsepower to the to the ground, and and you know what it's like now. Um, so it's uh, it, people are. I think people are doing a lot of different things, but I, but I, I think the power level can basically just stay, and you'll you'll you just gotta use it when you need it, and not. Do you, you know, think? When you do you don't think this uh, the conservation of these tires is kind of now dialing the sport back or changing it a little bit? Now people are adapting to this issue that is now popping up. For sure. But this is not new. This has been the case for several years. Uh, but it just seems you know, so more now than ever, and especially now limiting practice down to only 12 yep. laps. And now they were originally were trying to say that you can use only one set of tires for qualifying. Obviously, it seems like they got rid of that rule. But it seems like the organization itself was trying to come up with some implementation so we're not burning through a million sets of tires anymore. And, and now you hear strategies of, of, like Forsberg was saying earlier, and even kind of something that you mentioned is, now it's, a, it's more of a serious thought as far as how we drive. And before it was like lead foot everywhere we go, but now there's a consequence. You can do that in the lead, but then you're gonna have nothing for the chase, uh, for the chase. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So for sure. And you know, the, I, I think the rule with limiting uh, practice runs to twelve is, I think that's the tire manufacturers uh, wanting to to reduce costs as well and. I quite like that because if you look at other, other sports, you don't get a lot of practice. You know, you show up ready and uh, you make it happen. You know, and, and the next step that, that I wouldn't be against would be to skip uh, qualifying altogether and, and, you know, just practice uh, tandem. Uh, and that's all you do. And but, what would you like to see, like a, like a lottery for who you go up against? Or how would yeah. you then... We've talked so about that before. We definitely talked about that before. More like yep. a, a traditional pill draw system, which a lot of other racing organizations use. And we can compare it to like sprint car <laughs> stuff or a lot of uh, some of the SCCA events where you literally put one through 32 in a hat and you just go in there, pick the number, want to go against 32, stagger it all the way back. But then again, you would immediately go right into more of a, like you were saying, a top 32 tandem practice. You already know who you're yep. going against on Thursday. You can start making it. Yeah, I think it's kind of an interesting theory. Maybe and, someday. You know, and, and, and I guess the argument against that is that you want to see the top qualifiers in the final. But maybe it's a good thing if the, if the, the two guys or the, or the four guys leading in a championship, if they're meeting in top 32, because it, it, it allows for an evening, uh, like it, it allows for evening out the field. Mm -hmm. um, so. It, it, yeah, I thought of a couple of different weird theories behind that too, as far as fun ways you can use that as part of an activation. Where it's like, do you know how often do you have Toyota marketing be able to pick a number that affects your overall um, influence right. on how you? Do? So it's like you can get other people involved, or you can have you know sure. a fan deal, you can have a sponsor deal. Where it's like, hey, you're, that number that you pick is literally setting me up for this week, so pick a good one, you know? So there's a like, lot of interesting totally. things that you can do with that. The only other thing that I can kind of figure out as far as how it would affect Formula Drift is you would still only have to limit Pro 1 to 32. So how do you filter out guys out of Pro 1 and get the new guys in from Pro 2? So do you just get rid of the bottom six finishers in Pro 1 and then kind of fill that with Pro 2 and switch them out? That's the only thing that was kind of my hurdle. So here, here's a kicker for that. You could uh, you could make sure there's between 16 and 32 guys, and then whoever, if it's 30 guys uh, one event or 24 the other the you know the other event, that first round of 32 is like a pre-qualifying, uh, you know where where some guys will just have a buy run and just not have to do they will be seated or they will just not have to do the 32 battle. Um, or at the start of the year, you'll do what what they're doing in surfing. There is only thirty two guys, and if there's less, then there will be buy runs. Right. Yeah, if there's more, it's just an invitational, and they go off of who's best for the right. series. But how do you, how do you right. test? How do you figure out who's the best? That's out of curiosity. How would we? Well, I'd say guys that don't drive a lot, guys who eat a lot of food, mm. guys who look <laughs> look good, sound good, feel good. Uh, uh, that's quite a few people, Sam. 
That's quite a, few, quite a few competitors. Yeah, that was my only thing <laughs> trying to figure out is because, okay, what would we do with Pro 2? Maybe you just get rid of the bottom five and Pro 1, put the Pro top five Pro 2 guys up, the bottom finishers go back to Pro 2 and try to regain that license for Pro 1 because you still need to kind of recirculate the drivers in and out um, and kind of keep, obviously, the feeder seeders series efficient as far as feeding drivers up. But I think it's awesome. Once again, I think it would speed up the show by a million percent. It'd give more of that tandem, pra- uh, tandem practice, which if fans decide to show up on Thursday, at least you're going to see some cool tandem stuff uh, beginning on Thursday. Right. So it'd definitely make it a little more entertaining. And then obviously getting out side people involved with the sport by picking a number that influences who Osbo goes against. So you can blame them really for everything. Sure, sure. sure. But it's, uh, yeah. Uh, but, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I think the current format works too. And now it's almost yeah. like you, you get more out of the weekend. You know, it's right. almost two different competitions. Um, and it's almost like you can win two different things. So, you know, the current format works, too. Um, and it seems yeah. to me that, you know, going back to the limitation of practice, it seems like FD is trying to make it easier on the teams or cheaper for the teams by uh, making it a two-day event. Maybe they will eventually cut Thursday practice and do that practice on Friday. We will have qualifying. And then do uh, that um, Saturday. Yeah, um, it would definitely be cheaper on everyone. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Corey, I know you like talking about feeding drivers a lot. Uh, yeah. Maybe <laughs> one in particular. It's you. You like to feed yourself. Uh, what uh, Do you have anything else before we talk about Orlando? We can, of course, go back to talking about cars and all that. But let's talk about his uh, runs at Orlando. Yeah, I'm down with that. You, you hungry, though? You want, you want to take a you look famished? Yeah, I could definitely use probably some... Uh, what, what, what could I, I could eat a little pasta boli oli. I can have. Uh, have you ever had hot dogs with spaghetti, Osbo? Like, I I have poor reception. Or did you say have you had thugs with spaghetti? Yeah, have you had yeah. thugs with spaghetti before? <laughs> have, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, may have. Yeah, good. Anyways, let's uh, let's, yeah, let's uh, Corey, go. if you're hungry, I actually hid some cream cheese in the bass flute. He's got to get to it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a straw. Oh you have to God. suck it out. <laughs> you don't blow it out. You have to suck it. Which, which, by the way, we have some fun fun uh, bass, uh, traveling bass flute uh, stories from Orlando. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, so Paco's been traveling. Paco's goal is to travel with the bass flute around every round. So, Paco, oh, do you have your sure. bass flute case nearby? Uh, hold on one second. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, so Paco Paco's going through the TSA, right? And he's got his bass flute case because he yeah. brings a bass flute with him everywhere. Freddie, I don't know if you've seen the show uh, in the past too much with with the bass flute. It makes a cameo. But uh, Paco I'm okay to show Osbo right now. I'm I'm, comf- I'm comfortable enough to show Osbo. <laughs> you feel comfortable? Yeah. Should I show him right now, real quick? So this, yeah. So Larry Chen played this once on our show. He was really interested in it. I think we've gotten a couple other live guests to play a little ditty on the bass flute. All right. So here, I'm um, going to show Osbo the bass flute right now. It's an instrument, so don't. Well, so oh. show, the case, Paco, show the case first. So Paco is carrying this case through TSA. TSA really interested. They want to see what's inside the case. Paco, let's see the case uh, for the bass flute. So, so this is the oh, case for. Banjo. Yeah, so then we keep the bass flute in there. And, pa- and then, Corey, if you want to show Osbo the bass yeah. flute, see if that interests him at all. <laughs> so there's the bass flute. Uh, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an instrument. I know you're a dirty dog, but this is yeah, an so, instrument. So it's a flute. It's a bass flute. Oh, there's, a real, real, there's a real low key, real low pitch. So Paco brings the thing through TSA. TSA is like really curious about They're what like, this is. Excuse me, sir. What is this? And I was like, oh, yeah, it's, they, it's, pull it out of, they pull it out of Paco's bass, bass flute case. All the kids in the airport start crying. <laughs> <laughs> TSA stars like trying to taste me while I try yeah. to serenade them. The whole scene, and that's a story of why Paco's not allowed back in Florida. But uh, <laughs> the end. Anyways, the show's always looking for new sponsors. Yeah. I want to thank Next Entire. I don't know if you want to sponsor uh, uh, Osbo anymore. Now that he's been a part of this show, that's fine. <laughs> I guess you could ditch all of us at this point. Uh, AM Intakes will stick by us because they knew what they were getting into. <laughs> but thank you, racing. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I think any real true musician, Sam, will be able to separate uh, an instrument versus a, a genitalia. That's true. I've always heard that, Corey. Yeah, so any good musician would be able to separate the two. So all you dirty minds out there, it's okay um, to just stick, stick to that, and we'll be uh, the band that we originally started. 
The best part is oh, when yeah. I'm, I'm I'm leaving the leaving the plane and one of the one of the flight attendants is like, "Oh, mini guitar." And you're like, "No, man, <laughs> yeah. bass flute." I was like so <laughs> tempted to just like like. <laughs> it was funny because she she was playing like a guitar and Paco's like, "No, you dumb. You got to do it like this." And then he just <laughs> sat there deep into his mouth. Like, Anyways, from um, <laughs> the drift to Orlando, you got your buy run. Which this is kind of funny or interesting at least. So Matt Van Kirk, uh, who you went up against in top sixteen, he's a uh, he's new to Pro One, and and traditionally one of the issues with our qualifying system is that a new guy to Pro One <clears throat> would have to face off against someone like Freddie who qualified first, and let's say the new guy qualifies thirty second because he's new and he's not that experienced and not as good. He would go up against Freddie in in top thirty two, and uh, and then get creamed usually by by someone like Freddie. But he uh, got. He qualified 16th, which is super high for for someone that's so new to the series. And then uh, he got a, a nice buy against Essa because Essa did something that we all fear. I imagine all drivers fear doing, which is wrecking your car in practice just before competition. And he wasn't able to uh, get his car fully back together enough to run properly. But then Osbo and Van Kirk went up against each other anyways in top 16, which was interesting. And then Van Kirk, uh, as we mentioned on our AM and Takes <laughs> Halftime show, was super pumped about this because... I feel like you've told us a story similar when you were in form of the drift for the first time and you got to fight one of your heroes. It's like uh, Matt Van Kirk looks up to you. You're one of uh, Lorette talked to him and he said that uh, you're kind of one of his uh, inspirations and he was super excited to go up against you. And I feel like he, he showed pretty well. Absolutely. He really did. And it's funny because we went up against each other in uh, Long Beach as well. And he actually said that before our battle that, hey, you've been a long time idol you know, idol of mine and uh, excited to, to go against you. And he ran into me there, uh, but he did have a great showing in, uh, in Orlando. And I was, I was actually really concerned about that battle. And I told Matt after the fact, because he, he was really fast. He was looking really good on that track. Um, so, you know, it's not, we don't take any of these battles lightly. Th these are all out battles, all of them. And right. he could easily have taken us down. I, I don't remember exactly what happened, but he, I think he had a slight straightening or something. Uh, but he had great speed, and, you know, it's, he, he'll, be, he'll be beating us one day, you know? The next, the next Frederick Osbo is already out there, and he's training, and he's going to come and kick your ass. See, the other thing that I was thinking about, too, Osbo, is a strategy, because you have these new guys coming in, they're like, man, Osbo... I've been looking up to you. Have you ever thought just about being a dick to them and just like really busting their bubble? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> that could be, a, you know, that's a strategy. How would uh, I do that though? How would you do that? Uh, well, one of my favorite things to do when somebody says that to me is I start turning around and talk to them like Ace Ventura with my butt. <laughs> I must ask you <laughs> something. So I, I bend yeah. over and start talking with my butt, but. That'd be a strategy you can use against a lot of these people that uh, do look up to you a lot. You know, just really, just let them know the Norwegian hammer is ready to throw it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what I, That's always a good move. It's not my style. I, I'd probably do some. I'd probably be like, I must break you. you <laughs> yeah, there you go. Like that. More that, do that. I'll let you Think do about that. it. He goes back. He's like. Acting. We have to get that on camera. Like we hit, like we need to bring somebody. Like, hey, go ask us about this, and you should just like turn around. Like, I must break you. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Which, by the way, uh, real quick, we have this new feature on. If you're watching on YouTube, I have this new feature called Super Chat. Okay. Where you know, oh. you can like uh, give one dollar or two dollars or five dollars if you want to like highlight a comment like, or a question. Okay. And we have a request right now from Joshua Osborne. Okay. He wants Osbo to give a, to give him his best attempt at getting down with the sickness. A disturbed. A, you know. Ooh, ah, 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 ah. Are you familiar you with that song? song? I, okay, so I know the song. I don't know what the music video looks like. I don't. So I don't know. Just make it well, up. You don't have to have the music video to do that. Ooh, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> that was pretty uh, good, Sam. Let's see. Wow. That's no. not bad. Yeah, that, that, was I, no, that was not. I, I thought I was talking to the lead singer, Disturbed. That was that was that was. Good. Wow, I'm so disturbed right now. <laughs> <laughs> that hey. was it a Kid Rock version of that song? I bet it's killer <laughs> if there is one. I bet it's really good. It's different. His name's Child Rock. With the bob, bang, the bang. <laughs> uh, 
Diggy, get diggy, it, diggy, diggy, set the boogie, so then up. Chuck, I gave the, a noogie. Boogie. Pick a boogie. Oh, see, there's yeah. all remixes of that. Okay. Man, we should do karaoke sometime. It'd be really good. I think that would be fun okay. at some point if we did a Maximum Driftcast karaoke party, like maybe yeah. after one of the rounds and oh, we get all the boys we're, out. We're and, very uh, good it would be, at it. Can we call it the Maximum Driftcast sausage party? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's a good idea. You know, something like that. Just, so, just so everybody knows. In China. That's on KTV. Oh. In China? Or, yeah, let's do some karaoke or oh. you know, maybe in Japan, Japan. Or... Yeah, it needs to be like in Japan. And, you know, like we're all wearing like office attire. I want you to come I, up I, with I this. karaoke attire. <laughs> uh, we, like only sing in hentai title. <laughs> you only sing in hentai. I don't even know what that means, Paco. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Is this like a uh, dream? Is this like a dream yeah, coming true? Right, a couple, a bunch of people in the the chat are asking if you could define hentai for them. That is true. <laughs> it would be a lot of, it would be a lot of crying eyes. You can yeah. censor your mouth if you if you want us to. We just like put like one of those uh, <laughs> blurred bars over See, your, you, your mouth. Like if you you could, could, Brian, if you cut the mouth, I think it would be a lot of. Yeah. A lot of <laughs> There there's gonna be a lot of tentacles and stuff. Uh, sure, uh, sure. You know, there's going to be a lot of a lot of a lot of octopus flying around. Um, Paco will tentacles. probably be in the front row. Um, I'm coordinating and, the whole thing. Uh, I'm, I'm the, the orchestrating. Oh, the, yeah. Dun, 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 and there's hentai cue, dancers. Cue, cue the, uh, the tentacles. Yeah. <laughs> tentacles. Now, the, now, the, now the robots. Yeah. You know the the mechanical uh, <laughs> appendages. <Robots>. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 let's let's move on. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm glad we got those out of the way. Those were we were saving those. Once again, we're uh, uh, looking for sponsors. <laughs> sponsors for the show, if you're interested. Uh, Oswe, you then went up against Toyota teammate Gucci, Kenneth, Kenneth, the Kenneth the Juice, the Juice Man, Juice, juice Meister, the Wet Guy. You know, Lucy Goosey, Wet Juicy, Wet Juicy, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. What's uh, how'd that go? Um. I've heard a lot of nicknames for Ken, but not <laughs> Kenneth the Juice Man. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, so that again, uh, really close battle. Um, you know, I had a big correction in my chase against Ken. Uh, Kenny Jake, Jake, Kenny. Yeah. What's that? Sam is breaking Sorry, up. He's that? probably downloading hentai right now. Yes. <laughs> there we go. He's he's back yeah, with us. Uh, it's put it on pause, but um, <laughs> I so what saved us was our chase on Ken on the bank. So we had a pr pretty good chase on him on the bank, uh, but the rest he was doing really well. He was on a roll that weekend, qualified well, and you know I, I hope they, I hope this is a sign for things to come for Ken and Greddy. You know they were struggling last year and they were on a good one in Orlando, so you know they'll they'll be back. And you know, Ken is one, one thing I want to say about Ken is he's had my back since the first day I became a part of the sign program. And you know, he welcomed me with open arms and he was the, the sign poster boy. Right. right. And he's always been, he's, he's probably the coolest guy I know in this sport. He whoa, has, whoa, whoa, we're in this sport. Has, we're cool. uh, <laughs> these, you know, damn, these. Uh, I, I wish I had some of that. Mm. You, got Steez. you got Steez, Freddie. Don't be mean. Don't be mean to yourself, man. Paco I does have some. Paco Gucci does have gang. some Massimo clothing and interstate pants. That's yeah. What he still wears. Paco's got some Jenkos. Were Jenkos ever a thing in Norway? I don't even know what that is. The so Jenkos were. Let's say you wanted to shoplift. You looked like a big shoplifter back <laughs> in your day. Let's say you wanted to shoplift a VCR. Uh, these yep. were these were jeans that had pockets the size of a VCR or so. You, you know what a VCR is? You're, you're Do they have young. VCRs in Norway? Is it like the Fubu Fubu? Oh, yeah, yeah, Fubu. You might yeah. find a pair of Jenkos at Fubu if you're in the right neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, show oh, show all... Osbo what a Jenko well, jean looks uh, like. We have Brian, big please. balls pulling up some Jenkos. Let's right, see thanks, here. Brian. Yeah, thanks for wearing so, thanks for solving. <laughs> He's oh, just wearing right. them. Right oh my god, that's a guy wearing pants. Boom. Boom. There's some good oh, looking jeans. That looks like Ni Nika Poka. That looks like Nika Poka. Oh, yeah. Do you guys know what Nika Poka is? Nope. No, no, I have no idea. Do you know uh, Naoki Nakamura's pants? Oh, oh yeah. So yeah, that... the, the really baggy, those are Japanese carpenter pants. And the first time I was in Japan, I had my RSR translator that drove us around, uh, Go Yamamoto. 
So, and I asked him, I really want to buy pants like this. Uh, and I was like, yes. And then it turns out those were uh, Japanese carpenter work pants. And it's now Nakamura's uniform. Uh, and I don't know why. Maybe he's a carpenter. What What's the advantage of wearing those for carpentry? You, you can hold boxes. your hammers and all your nails. Well, I can hold I, my hammers in any pants, Sam. I always have a small hammer. Yeah. Sometimes, like a lot of the pants that I wear, can't hold in my hammer. So, <laughs> so like, I gotta you get wear a, those. Gotta get those some to hold in the pants. hammer. Yeah. Good and actually, uh, yeah. Brian, Brian Big Balls, I just sent you a, a link to an image there that you might find interesting. All right. Well, you want to show Freddie? Let's see, let's see this here. Uh, Big Balls so, yeah. is doing some digging here. Okay. Some dig balls. Big Balls is <laughs> doing some digging. Yep, you, so have yeah, to, so. you have to send it to our chat, Sam. Oh, uh, yeah, you have to put it to the Max chat. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really excited. Facebook now that here. we built so much suspense around this picture, Sam, I really hope it's good. It's going to be pretty good, I bet. Okay, Osbo, uh, when you see this picture, you're going to give it a 1 to 10 skill, 10 being the best, 1 being the worst, to see what okay. type of height Sam is creating. Can I do half way. points? Sure. Yes. It's just like Formula Drift. Yeah. You can do points. I want to hear style judge. I want to hear line judge. Right. And I want to hear oh. pants pocket oh. judge. <laughs> All right, so this is uh okay. Here we go. Uh oh. So Boom. this is Sam wearing Jenkos. <laughs> My two roommates there. It says a good look. That's that's a long. <laughs> wearing the sa- they're wearing the ago, same. They're wearing the same. Twenty fifteen. The same pair of Jenkos. Mm. The last one right that there. That's actually that. John Bon Jovi's <laughs> audio guy. Yeah, we have Bon John Jovi audio guy on the right. We have Sam the right. thug, nasty Nalvin, and, <laughs> and then we have Harry Berry in the middle. So what's fun about those jeans is that we bought them on eBay. I think they're the last pair in the world of Jenkos being made. <laughs> That's exciting. They're we legit got, Jenkos with, with, the, with the kangaroo and everything. So I want to know, what were you about? And who tucks in their shirt awesome. in a Jenkos, Sam? Was it like trying to be somewhat PC? Like I'm not... not yeah, like to... I want to let the people know, like, look, kids, I'm here to hang out. But also... Oh, will steal like, your VCR. I'm grown up now. <laughs> all right, I'm not sure... I can I can work a nine to five job in an accounting firm, but also when I'm off, I'm gonna wear some some wide jeans. I'm gonna steal some VCRs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you listen to Maximum Driftcast, only drift talk all the time, uh, number one drift source of information. Um, so yeah, you beat Gucci. Do you remember? Did he cry when you were done, or no? Well, how many tears? Ken, being the cool dude he is, the steez, remember, he walked over, gave me a high five, and said, now uh, take them all down, or now go win this thing. Now go lose to Forsberg, is what I think he said. Pretty much. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but uh, I, I wish I remember that exact battle, what went down. But I remember it's always fun watching you guys go. And then that brings us to the Forsberg battle, which went one more time. And honestly, I think... Uh, I was behind the camera shooting that one for fun, and I feel like the first battle, I was like, oh, Chris is screwed. I, I thought that you had beaten him, uh, but uh, did go over the battle with us. Um, Steph and I, we were, we were actually, we weren't fighting, but we were discussing all weekend. Uh, Steph, and I, I guess really... you're just saying this name. Who's Steph? <laughs> Papa, Papa Mama Kisses. Oh, okay, got um, it. Thank you. And uh, I... I kept wanting to put some more grip in the car. Uh, but, you know, there's, there was a lot going on behind the scenes. I was bending probably every single bolt in the suspension all weekend long because of that hard bump coming down from the bank. And we were actually having a lot of uh, issues just making the car run. So we never fully got the right setup in the car. And I think in hindsight, which is always 2020, we definitely didn't have a fast enough setup. And we realized that immediately against Forsberg. And, you know, I, he was lightning quick out of the gate, lightning quick on the bank. We had an okay chase on him on the bank, but really lost ground through the, the second part of the track. And I think it was, we got, a, we got lucky getting it one more time. And he, uh, we, you know, Forsberg just annihilated us on that, uh, on that one more time. And I also had a big air uh, crossed infield uh, behind him, and I came in too shallow. And, you know, it, it all kind of fell apart a little bit. And that is some, sometimes that's what happens in FT. When you realize you're at a big disadvantage, um, it, it's hard to, to keep your head straight. And, uh, yeah, I, I 
I fell apart. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's funny that you say your car, your car jumped there. Do you, how, how did your car jump and how did you make it jump in the middle? I mean, almost everyone's car jumps when uh, it comes down to it in the middle. But what do you mean when you say you jumped it a little bit too hard? No, uh, no just, uh, we didn't jump the car hard, but we were just bottoming out really hard coming down oh, from the you. bank. And with gotcha. this car still being a, a new build, we haven't figured out all the specs and the bolt sizes and stuff like that. And, and it turns out we need uh, a better quality bolt for uh, basically the lower pivot and the front suspension and stuff like that. So it's, it's even though... <clears throat> On the outside, a lot of times it looks relatively calm and collected. There's there's drama behind the scenes with us. Yeah. Just like I saw, the, I saw you or uh, Papa posted a sick uh, brake booster master cylinder mod there where you use some uh, hose clamps to yeah. brace that thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's, dude, first time I was driving the new car, I was doing, we were drifting around this this top secret uh, warehouse location in LA for a Toyota corporate uh, commercial. And I was drifting around a prototype uh, new Corolla, and there was only two in the country at the time, and those are valued at hundreds of thousands of dollars because they're rare, they're handmade. And I was drifting around it, and I went to grab the e-brake, and it just went straight to the bottom because I (laughs) bottom, basically I bent the sheet metal uh for for the master mount and i almost crashed into that uh prototype uh, <laughs> and, and you know stuff like that it's sometimes i wish i was better at the video logging stuff and would <laughs> capture capture stuff like that because th- th- yeah i think that would be yeah there'd, there'd be some interesting content there uh yeah sometimes. definitely you totally should yeah yeah i just gotta would you guys volunteer i need a good uh, video guy Actually, that might I don't be possible anyone. here actually, soon. Actually, so we'll, we actually, might be able to make something happen soon. We, we, we'll talk, you know, like we'll, give him a double wink, Paco. Wink, wink. We'll talk after this a little bit. Eh, eh. Paco, I need a guy that can get through uh, TSA with the bass flute. Uh, with the bass flute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Paco. We'll work. We'll work something out. I have, I have my ways. Right. I have my ways. Anyway, so so we were uh, back to like you crashing concept cars and let's go back. Let's finish up Orlando. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, let's get that out of the way. And then we'll wrap up the. So where'd you leave Uh, off, Sam? Well, we 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 left off with uh, him in Forsberg, and and then what did you do after the event? I guess that's the next thing to talk about. Where'd you go? What'd you do? Well, you got third place. That's exciting. You're on the podium, Um, and and that was really cool to see three champions on the podium at once. And you guys were. uh, we're all happy you guys all got the top off of the champagne, which was impressive. Sometimes sometimes right. people have harder times than others, but this yeah, time it well, all worked out for the best. We actually hung out in the pits for a while. We were going to go to the mud bogging next door, which <sighs> we had a blast mm-hmm. there a couple of years back. And I owe Mitch Castro's uh, mechanic uh, some hot dogs from that day. So we were going to do that. <gasps> Uh, but we ended up hanging out in the pit and we had some drinks and with the next crew. So they always have a good party going and, it, you know, it was it was fun, and uh, I think we all got a little animated, and Steph definitely got <laughs> very animated. So it, it was it was really cool. We were all happy, tired because it's been a mad rush the last yeah. the last months, you know, with traveling everywhere and doing a lot of things. So we were all kind of uh, exhausted, and at the same time, really happy about retaining the lead, and a little flustered with with how well Chris. Uh, and the guys did that weekend. So I, I think it's a sign of things to come. And, and I think Chris will be a force to be reckoned with. And, you know, it's, it's good for everyone that the, 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 the champions of the sport are still doing well, you know, because mm-hmm. it gives us something to aspire, you know, for. And right. One thing that Steph and I talk about is a lot is we try and look at the whole picture of everything. We try and like kind of see where the sport's headed. And one thing that we keep coming back to is that we would we would love to see the Ford guys do better, because yeah. a struggling Ford team is bad for all of us. Right, definitely. Um, because we all, I keep saying that Vaughn is the guy that's that's done the most for this sport with you know his whole persona, his whole team, his whole visionary thoughts on how everything should be and 
if those guys are struggling and if, if it's not a good look, you know, and, yeah. and they deserve to do better. So, you know, I hope those guys figure will figure it out. Yeah, we were lucky enough to have a uh, Chelsea uh, fill in for Corey on the halftime show. But, you know, he was he was definitely down. He was not happy. And, and you know, it was like uh, old Chelsea in that his BMW didn't work for an entire season. But uh, he he was uh, he still did a great job, of course. But, yeah, it is a huge bummer, especially since they're my old team. And, and it sucks to see him not right. doing well. But I know that they have the the skills and the manpower and and everything behind them to make those cars work and they've always done well at Atlanta so I'm, I'm excited to see them sure. back in back in the reins as it is said in a, of a Mustang that's as a that's a Yeehaw. pony joke Yeehaw, Yeehaw. as as they say what, what exactly happened to uh, Chelsea uh the motor took a dump I guess uh, he was able to qualify but I think I think uh, he didn't tell us specifically but my best guess is that Nothing catastrophic happened yet, but it was going to if he ran it further and they didn't have any spares. So I think it was uh, it was a decision to not blow up a very expensive motor. But that's just sure. my guess. That's all speculation. I'm not, they kicked me off the team for uh, trying to bring the base flute into Vaughn's car. <laughs> <laughs> I, you can bring the base flute into my car. Actually, you oh! can. No, no. Okay. Okay. It's so happening. We, Atlanta. We'll... No, it's happening. He said it. No, so Paco's actually going to perfect. You have a week, Paco, to perfect the Rocky theme song on the bass flute to play for Osborne. Well, I, I can already. I can already only plays three notes, by the way. But. I can already nail uh, Hot Cross Bones. Yep. Oh, and, obviously, bones. and obviously the Rude uh, Sandstorm. Sandstorm. On the the Sandstorm. Flute. That's really. Oh, but the the bass version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's a good question, uh, Osbo. Whenever you get into your car, you you always like hum a song or you sing a song, right, to to pump you up. And and is that song Darude Sandstorm? And if not, what is it? <laughs> uh, it's not it's not the Rude Sandstorm. It's oh bummer. It's it's uh it's plain it's complete silence. Okay. Uh, really? It's it's actually captured in outer space uh -huh. and it's like Are you joking? Like, like is it something you actually do? Of course. Course. Really, that's cool. It's I thought like, space like, had a sound, though. I thought I heard something at some point that like space like had a, some creepy like noises. A, a, it's like very relaxing humming, and then it's like beep boop beep boop beep boop beep, beep, like this little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's almost sounds like vaporwave music there. <laughs> Paco, <laughs> could yeah, that's zero, Paco, zero can you replicate shit. those beep boop boop noises that he just made? I think you've got an instrument there that yeah. can make those noises. <laughs> it could be his new uh, his new soundtrack when he's getting calmed down for the competition. Do -do. <laughs> no, no, no! I was, I was meeting oh. on the instrument there. On the bass flute. <laughs> you have, oh, you like, have fucking world. I, I don't think it can do it live. It's too much pressure. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, next question. Well, so right, let's move on. Kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we already. We already but, no, but seriously, do you have like any type of ritual before you go on qualifier? Do you have anything that you do? I'm blown away of... that he listens to space noises. That's pretty sweet. We'll have to find that. <laughs> but yeah, what other, what other rituals do you have? Any other? Uh... It's. It, I'm. I'm definitely a creature of habit. Uh, you know, I eat the same kind of sandwich uh, every race day. I, what sandwich is that? It's uh, it depends where we are in the world. Uh, okay. In California, it's Jimmy John's. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you like get a, there? Tuna, turkey, Vito, turkey club, a BLT. 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 Okay. If if we're on the East Coast, which we are right now, we it's get a, a public or a pubic. As we like to call Pubis. it. Pubis. Oh, uh, Freddie. Uh, also, clean up, clean up that poop mouth of yours. <laughs> 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 So you go to Pubic Bones and you get what kind of sandwich? Why do you go, Why don't you go to Wawa, dude? Yeah, Wawa's the hot, hot jam. We do that. So we do that. Actually, we do that. We're on when we're on the northeast coast. So there's a Wawa right next to the track in Florida. You'd nut. Uh, but I, I'd rather I, I do the pubics instead. <laughs> no, Freddie, hey, come on, dude. I, we're gonna have I, to kick you off the show if you keep hey, on cracking wise like hey, that. Can I tell you? Hey, maybe I might have something that might help you a little bit. I know you you finished well in Long Beach in Orlando, but I'm gonna give you a trip out uh, a trick out of Paco's book. You know, because Paco okay. is one of the best van drivers in the world. I don't know if you know that or not. Mm -hmm. I know that. Okay, what Paco usually does before qualifying is he buttercups himself. What does that mean? That's where he farts in his hand and he sniffs it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I thought nobody was watching. So, oh man, that's a good move, Paco. Uh, so, I, sure, that's that's, that that's what do I do. That. So if you want a uh, a winning attitude like Paco and be one of the best drivers you can be, that's one of the things that uh, Paco's been doing for quite some time. I will sure. consider that. I mean, and look at me—I'm a winner. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I always thought I was using winner, Paco. <laughs> 
I'm a wiener, like it's in a oh, hot dog. Oh, wiener, yeah, like you wiener, are yeah, a little wiener, too. Yeah. All right, you guys want to uh, hit up our uh, YouTube questions and Instagram questions and all that? Yeah, let's. Uh, else for so Paco was mentioning earlier, we have this new service on YouTube, which is called yeah, Super Chat. Super Chat. Uh, we do yeah. have two things on Super Chat that we would like to get. Oh, oh. What's that? Chris. Chris would be a good one to start right, with. We'll there. start with Chris Nelson. This is a question for Osbo. All the tracks of FD, which serves the best hot dogs? That's a good question, Chris. Oh, uh, that okay. So I I really like hot dogs. Uh, oh my but god! But I wouldn't know because I eat my BLT, right? Right, right, but right, 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 right. Of, uh, as an educated guess, I would probably say New Jersey. New Jersey, these yeah. really? Coney Island, They're close to Coney. They got the hot doggies there. Do you know when I was born, my mom wanted to name me Coney Hosford, but. That she had to throw an R in there and get rid of the N. Ah, big mistake. Yeah, I know. That was a big mistake. She blew it. Uh, There's another question. It's right more, here. Of a, uh, it's a a more of a request from ABAP, A B A P Garage. Yeah, and if he wants you to say, Will you marry me, Vanessa Hughes? No, happy, sorry. No. It's a happy anniversary. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Wait, what was this? Uh, so <laughs> we have, uh, have A B P Garage. He was curious if you'd be okay yeah. to say, uh, can you say happy anniversary to Vanessa Hughes? Happy anniversary, Vanessa Hughes. Happy anniversary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Osbo, how long have you been dating Vanessa? <laughs> uh, a couple seconds. <laughs> just, couple seconds. just started a couple just seconds ago. Heist it. <laughs> One second anniversary. All right, cool. Well, we got to go to the Instagram questions. If you guys oh, have more questions you want to shoot through the super chat on YouTube, feel free to do it as we are looking for questions on Instagram. We'll put the top on the super chat. But uh, on, on Instagram, this is a really good one from Mario Salguero19. What time do you guys go online? Hey, Oswald, are you still there? <laughs> oh, he Oswald, might, he might have frozen up a little bit. He might have frozen up. Let's so, give him one I'm second. Like, did the Medusas? Did he get stung by a Medusa? At least room? he's at least he's frozen Look in like him. a he's... very perfect position. Where it's oh, like, no. uh, Brian, if you could if you could move that got... profile. Hello. Yes. Oh my Hello. God, he's back! Can you hear us? I'm Damn. sorry. It's okay. D -d Don't be uh, sorry. Hard rock. I'll okay. break you. By the way, Abab Garage says uh, in her dreams. Yeah. And and they're 12 years today. Oh well, congratulations! Happy 12 years. Yeah. Happy 12. Your video's frozen. Did you spill your vanilla iced tea on to, on your keyboard or what? Oh, yeah. He's still in that perfect, perfect position. He's, that so for you guys joke? that are just listening to the podcast version, he, he Skype ended up freezing, but he's looking over to the right, and it's just a perfect silhouette of his face that just looks flawless. The jawline. Yeah, it's, it's, it's remarkable. Let's see. Uh, let's try. Hey guys, let's... I am back. There, there you go. go. Can you guys Hold hear on. me? This side. We can only hear you. Hello? That's fine. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Tell me who's got a better jawline real quick. Let's Sam switch. or... Cam camera Sam? Okay, let's see. Here we go. Sam, right. that's not no. bad. That's a good, good... Strong. Yeah, the, the, strong. Beard, the beard kind of helps. No, hold on. Helps. But see, as oh. soon as he, soon as he <laughs> talks, now you have two there chance. You so you got two versus uh, one. That's my a vote, double, Sam. Double bow. Right, let's go Sam. switch to Osmo real quick. Oof. Oh, my God. Look at that know. thing. Osmo by a what? chin. Uh, Osmo by one chin. <laughs> Damn it! Osbo wins again. Uh, is he? Is he really gone? Is he back? Yeah, Osbo, he's us. gone. Let, let's see if we can if, I, if he up. calls us back. In the meanwhile, yeah. let's um, let me ask him real quick. Too. Uh, Were you guys nervous hopping onto this call at all? Totally. Yeah, I was kind of kind of nervous. It's too. it's always actually, dude. Uh, Frederick Osbo was our first uh, live show guest. Oh really? Yeah, the first the first time we did a show here in the in the studio with a live. Uh, the live stream happening at the same time. Yeah. So in that episode, absolutely nothing went wrong. I don't know if you can remember. <laughs> it's it seems like with time we we have our peaks and valleys. Yeah. You know we have really high moments. Yeah. And then we hit those really low lows. I'm I'm definitely ba uh, blaming everything on Skype. By the way, <laughs> Skype. Well, technology. You know, we we push the hey, limits. He's back. Is he back? Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really sorry. Something happened with the Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> it's probably the FBI or the surveillance. They yeah, tell it to the one. judge. It's it's really <laughs> weird. As soon as we started talking about alien music that you listen to before yeah. he runs, it really started going to crap. Then, yeah, dude, that's the government on a you know, it's 
It's Chelsea Denofa doing the aliens thing that Paco made in the meme memes. Yep. I don't know. Which but which All other right. way do you have the question, Sam? Uh, do you have a comment, I, Paco? I have one right That's, here. I, I just got. I just have to say one thing. It's sure. really interesting seeing how the backgrounds in your respective uh, studios match your personality. I can totally tell that Sam is in the swanky, artsy, dark uh, dungeon. Uh, I have a 500 square foot hut in Venice Beach, so you're incorrect, sir. Oh, <laughs> uh, almost. Paco is um. in some kind of porn studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a big black leather That's couch. Perfect. Corey, Corey's whipping out an oil bottle right now. Uh, you you my... can cut to me. What about mine, Oswald? Can you judge well, mine? It looks like he's sitting inside a subway. Yeah, you sit inside a subway restaurant. <laughs> <for> <laughs> the the restaurant. Restaurant. That's what it looks like. You, you can see well, that foot long on the back. Well, yeah, I got a foot long sub right here with your name on it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> when you're ready to take a bite, let me know. I'll deliver. I'll hand deliver uh, to you. I can't wait to get this uh, episode demonetized. But... I'm gonna roll over just to the right. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. Uh, I'll give you extra bonus uh, points if you can tell me what is this thing hanging off of. Hey, myself. Of oh, uh, that's Chris a, Stops, uh Jack. Can you uh, can yeah. you just pull that down and show him? Yeah, dangle that in front of the camera. Let's see if Oswald knows what that is. If not, we'll oh, have no. to explain. Put it, to it back. Him. Put it back. No, we're gonna have to explain it to him. To, to, to grab it. That's Sam. fine. It's fine. No, oh, we're gonna do it. I, this is uh, a good competition what? because so far Oswald's been striking out. We, Jack? No, we got there's a there's something on it, and we want you to tell us what this is. When you see this item, what is it? Yeah. All Which, right. by the way, uh, thanks, uh, Sack Clapman, for yeah. sending us these. Go ahead, hold that nice and tight to the camera there. What is this, Osbo? Oh, I was right. It is a porn studio. So what? <laughs> it is a porn studio. So those are, <laughs> those are actually nose plugs for yeah. Paco snoring. <laughs> so when he goes swimming, he puts <laughs> them on it his is, nose. It, these They're are my, goggles, yep. my uh, <laughs> watching far away glasses. I think they're not. Right, so, uh, so Osbo, okay, so at least we learned from this that's what Osbo is a little dirty dog. Okay? They're, they're glass bearings. He called the bass flute a genitalia, and then he says that's something out of a porn studio. <laughs> oh my god, he's oh, taking dude, a photo of it. Freddy. Is he. Uh, yeah, is, 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 so Osbo can get a photo, please, Paco. Uh, this is how my reputation ends. No, that's just the and thing Spaco, is, you be, your reputation's only getting better by the day. They, oh, they're sorry, just sorry. really expensive <laughs> swimming goggles made out of marbles, glass bearings. They're glass bearings. You know, the thing is, as we've talked about this before, being on the cutting edge side of technology, you run into things like this that people can easily confuse. Yeah, and that's just one of those items. Yeah, and the base flute. The base flute's ahead of its time. Oh yeah, it's you know, I just said Osbo's two thousand and late, and we're two thousand. Oh, breakthrough! In, in, in three thousand and five, kids are going to be like, "Wow, Maximum Driftcast! Those guys were ahead of the curve." Yeah, you know? it's just coming. It's just time, you know. Just one more time, we have the the more people will find out. All right, can uh, we? So Osbo, Osbo, your reception's real crap. Uh, so we can still get through these questions. Maybe kill your video feed. I don't know. Do you guys have any other ideas? Because I want to make sure we get uh, get some fan questions in. Yeah, let's let's try to. Let's uh, hang up on him real quick and let, let me have him. Don't stop him. You can just kill his video. If you can turn the camera part off, then you should be good with just audio, Osmo. Keep just, talking so we make sure we yeah, don't but he, We're not sure if he's listening. Yeah, I would just hang up on his so, ass. Do yeah, you know what? Hang he, up. He's, he's made fun of us. He's made fun of our, our uh, devices we use on a daily basis here a at daily the studio. Basis for a show. So yeah, let's call them and hopefully get an audio only so we can get through the, the fan questions yeah, here. Yeah, the fan I'd questions there, is crucial. Look for these hard questions to get answered. Good thing. It does it. improve my vision. Does it? Oh, yeah, I can I can totally see the future. Can you have, what do you see? Let's see, when Osbo gets back on, um, I want you to see what you see in the future. Actually, can you just start <laughs> off with Sam? What do you, wait, do we have him back? Ready to get there again, audio? There he is. Oh, that's way better. Uh, hi, guys. I'm back. Okay, cool. Hey, okay. I'm, I'm really sorry. There, there's something with the uh, Wi Fi. Oh, do, do, do you know what uh, our, the questions oh, before Paco sticks oh, pa pa Paco's reading I'm, into your Paco, future right now. I'm analyzing the network right now, and okay. I foresee okay. a <laughs> bad Wi Fi. There you go. What do you see uh, in Osbo's future? Did you get uh, it? <laughs> were you scared or were you like really excited about he it? He has a, a full beard. Okay, in the future. Uh, in nice. the future, yeah. 
<laughs> oh my god, I'm looking at myself. It's horrible. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I want to know about Oswald's future, Paco. Don't let us down. He's I don't think. Beard. I don't think I should tell. It's don't, horrible. Keep, oh boy. Uh, yeah. it's it's a, Let's go to the questions. Let's, All right. Right. Let's go to the questions. Let's, let's, let's questions. All right. Uh, this one's from. It uh, looks like Shay Lassay Dan O'Fay. It's a weird name. Uh, when you're driving in tandem on the bank and you're approaching the lead car, what part of the car do you focus on? I focus on. I usually focus on that front tire up in the air, dangling like a carrot. Paco, uh, can you do an example? Of what he's talking about. Let's do this again. A dangling carrot, and you're looking. The, the front tire up in the air because of all the jacking is like a carrot. Yeah. A dangling carrot. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so, you just want to crawl underneath that, that front tire and 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 let that front tire get on top of your car and just embrace you. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. We're going back uh, thank to you. that. Great thank question. you very much, uh, Shay, Lassay, Den Um <laughs> Uh, uh, Ken Gushi has his own response for that. He says uh, when he's following you, he focuses on your manly jaw. Okay. Uh, good, good. I have a question from uh, race car stuff. By the way, he hooked us up with some goodies at the track. Thanks, buddy. Uh, he says, uh, "How many course light has Pat Gooden recommended you to drink before each competition?" Oh, and it looks like you already answered him. <laughs> what he wow. say? Wow. Uh, fr- username Frederick Oswald yeah. says. Uh, uh, B T X I N D would know about the course light. Because that's how Frederick Oswell sounds like. <laughs> hey, um. So, so BTX, that's uh, Aldo. So he oh. is, uh, yeah, part of uh, Paparazzi's Racing. Hi, he Aldo. drinks. We like Aldo. Nothing but Force Light. Oh, nice. Yeah. We, yeah, we like Aldo. Aldo's, Aldo's you yeah. know, when we start racing again, we're going to steal him from you. Yeah. Um, so just I fair guess... warning. Yeah. What's that? I when? said uh, when when we start the Maximum Driftcast race team one day, probably in 2043, mm-hmm. we're going to steal Aldo from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that will be hard, guys. He, I know. He is, we won't let him go. Uh, but but then again, 2043? Yeah, that's when we'll have all our shit together. So it's a couple. Uh, probably just okay. a handful. All right. All right. We, we can. It, it should be fine. Just Real quick, uh, this is this is my dream drift team. All right, so listen, uh, spotter is Pat Gooden, okay, um, good. chief mechanic. Pat Gooden. Okay. Um, nice, nice, let's nice. Let's see, tire changer. Corey Hosford. Pat Gooden, uh, okay. and then uh, what's the what's the uh, oh the lube boy, the boy that lubes <laughs> you up before the race. So you no, is, race is the lube boy? Yeah, the guy is lubes that, you up to get you in your race suit. Is that a fluffer? Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> Loobster. Uh, that, that's going to be Pat Gooden, too. So, wow. If I can get about 40 duck sized Pat Goodens wow. for my team, that'd be a good team. That would be a rock solid team, Sam. Mm-hmm. I, if, if Pat bells out on the lube guy, I would be the lube tech to get you in your suit. Thank you, Corey. I yeah, appreciate that. No problem, man. Because you uh, still have that race really suit for question kid. from uh, Cam Automog Which of the hosts would you like to get a piggyback ride from? And which ones could you give a piggyback ride to? Oh, boy. Out of you guys? Uh, yes. Who would I like to get a piggyback? I, I think getting on the back of Paco would be the wildest. Why, why would that be the wildest? Do you think he's a, he does a wild ride? You stick a finger back there and watch oh! him <laughs> A little too wild. Did, did you see his new glasses? <laughs> yeah. Mean, did you see his instrument? I guess I mean, he parties. I guess he does party pretty hard if that's what you're going to do. No, you're I, I, I hope you're though. talking about these ones. <laughs> Your new glasses. Uh-uh. Yeah, those, those new glasses. Those are retired. <laughs> that's the carrot Osbo looks for. So, okay, so I would ride pa- Paco's back. Just the yeah. back. Uh, Corey would be commentating, okay. and Sam would be mm. documenting it for all eternity and sending it into space for. For, for, for you to listen to, for future Osbos to listen exactly. to for times to come. These this gotcha. glassberries taste a little little sour. <laughs> a little muddy. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right, and then uh, which of us could you give a piggyback ride to? Probably the lightest, but I'm not really sure who that is. He's not, that is tough. That will, be, that will be Big Balls. Well, Big Balls is kind of the, probably the smallest guy here. I'm second. Smallest. But I mean, between Corey, yeah, I'd say Corey's been losing a lot of weight. You can't tell. Like, he wasn't at the Orlando uh, event, unfortunately, yeah. but that's because his uh, Jenny Craig was in full swing. He didn't want to yeah, lose. Yeah, I couldn't get he didn't off the diet. Drop off the bandwagon. 
I've been so, meal uh, prepping. Corey actually weighs a very limber 145 right stacked. now. It's crazy. Fully stacked with rocks in my okay. pocket. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They, I, it, so there's a different way of doing that. It's pumping you guys full of uh, helium. Okay. So, Where would you so pump it in from <laughs> or into? <laughs> Every... <laughs> You know, we just got to be ready for this because we do want this to happen. So it, it'd be er, every orifice. Okay. I mean, I, that's, that's just yeah. Okay. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm publicly going to call out Frederick Asma right here for the biggest party foul for answering the questions this is awesome. no. on Instagram. Like, you ahead of the time. questions ahead of time. It's all right. He's prepared. Hey, I, I Terrible. To prepare. The nice thing about Osbo, he this is not his first rodeo. That's true. You know what I mean? He came in. This is part of his strategy that makes him the Frederick Osbo we all know and and like a lot. You true. know, true. He's a prepared man. Uh, so yeah, I got you, a question. You got your question answered, guys. Okay. Uh, I got but, I got a question. Uh, this is from Sloppy Yogurt. Uh-huh. He goes, Osbo, if you're sliding into home, what's your pants full of? Ooh, good. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 Janko pants. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what would they be full of? Yeah. VCRs? No. Okay. Uh, my, <laughs> my my pants would be full of. What would they be full of? I have. What was that, babe? Okay. The question is from Sloppy Yogurt. If you're sliding into home, what are your pants full of? Uh, raspberry juice. Okay, oh, that's, raspberry that's not bad. That's not bad. What did you, you? You said what is that, babe? Were you referring to Paco? Uh, not this time. Not this what, time. What, what were you saying, babe? What What are my pants full of? Oh no. He says apple juice. I said <laughs> raspberry juice. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is that a thing? See, that American do? restaurants do not have raspberry juice, so I've yeah, never even heard of raspberry. Yeah, juice. raspberry juice sounds like terrible. Come it's, on, dude. It sounds awesome. It's gonna be that sounds really. Cute. Is that like uh, Lingen juice or whatever the shit that IKEA has? Oh. That's a, it's not Lingen. Lingonberry. Uh, Lingonberry. Say that again. Lingonberry. Oh, oh. Lingonberry. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's weird. Also, uh, we've been. I think we're closer than ever. We we finally met a couple people from Agate Bill, but uh, we we still need to get there. So if you can do put in a good word for us, we're fun guys. Look at Paco. He likes to have fun. Can you just do what you got to do to get us there? Yeah. Paco will bring all of his tricks. I'll bring the base loot and yeah. the glass bearings. Yep. <laughs> and and I'll probably be kicked for life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, from the you would not be allowed to go. <laughs> Perfectly <laughs> banned from yeah. not from Norway. It and it'd be on Sweden. the news. <laughs> Foreign America brings guys, anal beads and a penis flute. Will be... <laughs> It'll be you like it will be hailed as king. Oh, oh I, wish I wish. One day. It will be, be like good. in like in Fight and, Club. Uh, just remember that a got bill. There, dude, I got Bill. Four days after the festival's over, they found guys kind of in the gutter. Basically, they had a forklift running in a, <laughs> into a bunch of trash to lift it up. As they were about to run the fork into the trash, Whoa. this guy wakes up and starts. <laughs> oh my <walking> god! <laughs> <laughs> Real story. That is That's incredible. Got Bill one hundred and one. Got the Bill. Wow. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be there then. Uh, good. Great Obviously, question. Freddie already asked, answered all the questions. And no, I have, I have one right no, here that he has an answer. Because we got to get our audio There's one from me. Iron Dukey, our good old faithful Dukester. He's faithful. Is it true that you're actually sponsored by the Nickelback song Rockstar and not the energy drink? Ooh. <laughs> it's true. What? Look at this photograph. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that... Uh, uh, that is true. That is true. Yeah. Perfect it's actually the song. No, I, 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 I would like to thank Chad Kroger for giving you an opportunity to get into drifting. That is awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank I you. wish that uh, yeah, we had time and energy for someone to like go through these episodes and just like uh, Osmo's had like about, uh, about 10 good one liners there, right there. If we could just get like a, a quick mashup of, of all those, you know, Paco's because you're, you're expecting at this point that Toyota hasn't watched two hours of the show and they're just not going to see the mm-hmm. end parts here. I, you know it. Here, I got a real question. Let's <laughs> let's go this. This is one Osbo has an answer. This is from Mark I I ninety. When are you going to come back to Ireland and be the first non Irish driver to ever win an event here? If you do, oh, would you boy. bring your GT eight six? I think that's harder than winning an FD round. Really? Why? Well, what's what's the theory behind that? The it's such an they won an incredible amount of talent. 
Number two, they have a limited amount of tracks that they know extremely well. Okay. Uh, all of them. Uh, three, you, the cars are extreme. Like there's no, no weight uh, as far as uh, as far as that, there's no weight limit. So the cars are super light. You have to have uh, really well-prepared equipment, which would be very different from an FD car because the cars are really light. They favor light motors, all this stuff. And, you know, I, I've been there two times. Um, got my ass kicked both times. Um, the first time was probably the best, but it's, I have a lot of respect for the Irish. Uh, and I'd love to go back because when you think of it, drifting in Ireland is like NASCAR in the States. You have kids in school wearing uh, IDC hoodies. Sick. Like it's such a, it, it goes, it runs so deep in their blood. It's just a really tiny country. Um, so it's, it, it really is almost like a national sport over there. So I would love to go back, but I wouldn't go back unless I was absolutely 100% prepared for it. Yeah, no, no loaner cars. You'd have yeah. to uh, get, a, get a properly built Osbo special over there. Stuff like that, and and kind of identify some kind of opportunity, like figure out if there's something they haven't quite figured out, and try and do that part better. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I'd, oh, yeah. I'd I'd lo I'd love to go I'd love to go back, but um, perhaps more so right now to go there and be a part of the scene, and then if we can get serious backing behind it and do it, then I will go there and compete. All right, here's another one. This is from Handsome Hansen. Ooh. Favorite track, worst track? In FD, favorite track would probably be... I really like Atlanta. That's probably my favorite track, even though we haven't yeah. been able to make it happen. And it's... I think we've won at all the FD tracks now, except Atlanta. Really? Uh, yeah. yeah, and obviously except uh, St. Louis, which I haven't been to. But Atlanta is probably still my favorite. Um, it's something about that fast flowing, fast as line kind of way uh, of driving it that I like. And the yeah. worst track would maybe be Irvingdale. I, really? I still oh like it. Oh I, wow. like the, I like the aura of it and, and you know, the, the, how grand it looks, but I, I don't like the actual course. Well, good thing we're yeah, never going real. back because it's shut down for good. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sorry to bust your bottle. bubble, bubble. Butthole. 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 Butthole.
like I realize I'm the luckiest guy alive, and maybe one of the luck, maybe the luckiest guys, one of the luckiest guys in drifting. Like I get to travel the world, do the sport I love, all these things. And sometimes when I'm in China competing, I just want to be in my own bed and tinker with my old little play car. I have this eight-year-old dream right now that I want to do. I want to build a rat rod. That's something yeah. that I really want to do and as a pet pet fun project. So I think the real answer to that first question, the end goal is to be happy, whatever that is. Yeah. And right now I'm super happy competing in FD. I have the tools to do it, an amazing team, all these things. But, you know, have I thought any further than being a drift driver? Maybe, maybe not so much, you know, like I... For now, this is what I want to do, and I almost don't want to think too far ahead. I want to, you know, just live in the moment and and have the most fun doing that. Can I have a moment of silence for my feels, real quick? You just murdered us. The, uh, murdered us. No, that's moment the, of silence for my feels, Paco. All right, so the trick, the trick, Freddie, is to realize that you know you're not peaked today. You peaked when you were 16 at the illegal street races in your Ford Probe GT. You turn on your dome light, it's blue. You go, you replace the dome light with a blue light, you can't see much in there. And what you do is you put on a little Darude. You put on, that's right, sandstorm. <laughs> sandstorm. And then you blow, the, do you know you blow the doors. You blow the doors off of some kid in a non VTEC Civic four door, probably stolen from mom, probably an automatic. He blows the doors off and you realize you have peaked. And it's all honestly been down the hill for that, from there for me. I so. was going to say, Sam, like, like being a 16 year old, just at the top, you know, you were at the top in the street racing. That's you know? crazy. It's like that. Every part of that story was true. And, yeah, like not even. And so what have you been doing to recover, <laughs> Sam? Uh, I mean, it's, that's the thing though, is that like everything has been downhill from that moment. So it's always <laughs> kind of here I am. So every every like new accomplishment we have like with the, this podcast and like in my my professional life like hey I'm talking to Frederick Osbo he's awesome like I wouldn't have thought that many years ago it doesn't matter Ford Probe GT blowing the doors off of the automatic <laughs> not, boom you can't get better than that nope. <sighs> sure. Sure. yeah, yeah. No, so, that's, sure. that's that's deep but that was so, uh, I'll stop what, fucking around hold for on. a second I want to know so what, was, hold on hold on that was yeah go ahead I'm gonna I'm just gonna ask Osbo this because you you said you don't want to kind of look too far ahead. But what would Osbo be doing without drifting? Porn. And porn, because we know you'd kill it in that. But I, I, I'd, um, I, I'd be okay. <laughs> I'd be okay. That's it. The end. Looks around for moving. Ah, yeah, you're pretty, pretty much right. <laughs> uh, I. What would I do? I would probably be in some kind of marketing. Uh, you know, I had four friends that I went to. school school with the business school and those guys have started their own businesses they're, they're doing pretty well with that stuff uh maybe i do something like that you know some kind of tech something but you know i i i i don't see any way without doing this that's okay. the thing this has always been my calling you know what so, uh, let, let's ask this then what was your first job i was uh, a uh uh, working in the registry at a 7-Eleven in Norway. Congratulations, and At the man. same time, I was selling vacuum cleaners. I was driving around in a $300 Volvo selling vacuum cleaners on the door. Wow. Really? For a door-to-door yeah. uh, sucker? You just go by and... <laughs> I got the yep. gnarliest suckers in Norway right here in my van. Come check them out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Pretty much. Life changed a little yep. bit since then. That's insane man i like uh, but, i like hearing those cop stories but i have a photo that i love to share every now and then and it's it's of that me posing in front of that volvo uh you know like with it it really was a pos volvo and then me posing in front of the 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 corolla it's ex the exact same thing <laughs> why haven't we seen like, that yet have you posted oh no, wait are you trying to get us to look at this photograph Look at this. Uh, let me let me let me look at this photograph. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see this. Yeah, if you could, do you have a digital uh, version? Uh, we would love to show it. We don't have to do it this second. We don't have to do it a second at all. We'll but share. if you find if it, you send uh, it, share travels, it send yeah. please uh, send it to us so we can put it on the uh, the, the Maxim Driftcast discussion board later. Because that's a, that's a super cool story, though. I like that a lot. Which, by the way, I mean, now that we are like in 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 stories and heroes and stuff like that. So, uh, Matt Van Kirk. 
who you know you guys uh went and uh, uh, uh yep yeah you guys you guys you guys battled that uh, yep. yeah, uh, the top 32. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh... he's he's here in the questions asking uh okay. what are you doing with the scion tc that's oh, look, there it is. From... There's the photo. That's... Oh, my God. Look at that. 2004. Right there. 2004. Nice. And this is actually the first TZ. And then I have some other photos that are similar of the Corolla. You see how that's exactly the same thing? That's awesome. Yeah. 2004. I love that uh, need to speed livery, by the way. That Corolla livery was sweet. Or not Corolla, that TC livery. How old were you in 2004? 19. 19. Paco was, what, 43? 24. Oh, 24. <laughs> I was I was eighteen yeah. or you're older. So that was me? just that's, right, that's just right after your probe day, Sam. Huh. That was no, that's right after I was already blowing the doors off <laughs> little hot hatches like that piece of probes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Poor awesome. Probe. Oh my god! Outside of that, Ford probes in Norway. Uh, there were there were some uh, gray market imports, but they uh, right. they're hot, long the hot ones. Probe was a hot commodity in Norway, Sam. You would have been a big dog. <laughs> Especially All right, uh, last question from uh, your your, uh, your your bud Matt Van Key Van KK Van Kirk Van Kurt Russell. He says, uh, ask him what he's doing with the the Cheyenne TC. That's what it... the TC Jessica picked up and sent to the Peterson Auto Museum. I think. No way. That's awesome. So it's... Wow. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So that car is actually the most winning car in FD history, which is kind of crazy. What's that? Was that was that Tanner Faust's car? No, so he had the TC1, <laughs> the first generation TC, and then the TC2 was the one that I drove from start to finish for wow. seven seasons or so. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd really appreciate it, man, if you sa it would save some accomplishments for us and some yeah. of the other drivers. Uh, that'd be appreciated. Also, if uh, Peterson Museum, uh, I could probably <laughs> what buy a probe. probe. <laughs> <laughs> Made me try it. Uh, I could look. I could look at that for you. But just let me know. You know where to find the probe me. Probe kind of looks like a flying saucer, doesn't it? Which yeah. I, it, it it's a thing of beauty. It it does look like a probe. No, it's it. Once again, it's ahead of its time. That goes with the whole theme of the show, guys. So <laughs> come on. So maybe that's something. Maybe there's something in the title there. Ahead of the. I don't know. I don't know. What, what, do you, what do you? What should we call the show, uh, uh, Osbo? What do you think? Osbo, Osbo, some um, pros. Old guys, old guys rambling about old accomplishments. Awesome. Mm, that that's seems pretty that's sad. Pretty, that's that's pretty. Know. That's pinch racers. I'll be right back. I'm gonna get some blades. <laughs> awesome. Well, Osbo, awesome. thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy your stay at the Holiday Inn in Florida. Uh, mm -hmm. We will be seeing you. And we'll be giving you giant hugs and high fives uh, in Atlanta, wishing you good luck. You'll probably be with us in Team Rowdy, hopefully for a little bit. And uh, Osbo can even help us. Can even help us thank uh, the show's sponsors. Uh, Osbo, are you on AM intake still? Oh, Sam. So I lost no, you there not... again. You're gonna you, you're gonna, gonna help us thank. Night. Can you repeat that? Sam? You're gonna help us. Uh, we always say thanks to our sponsors, and thankfully we share a lot of the same. Are you st are you still on AM intakes, or did you do you hate them now? No, no, no. I we we still work with AM intakes in Europe, uh, and you know we use a lot of the intakes, but I don't think they're an an official sponsor of the FT team this year. But okay, so uh, you thank AM intakes Europe. We'll thank AM intakes America. <laughs> thank you. And, AM takes Europe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, uh, and then we could also thank uh, Nex Entire, supporter of the show oh. and supporter of Osbo. Yeah. Thank and you, And we could also thank uh, Motegi Racing, supporter of the show and supporter of Osbo. Absolutely. So you have three uh, people here fighting with you side by side as a bunch of warriors. Yeah. What's that you. like? Like you're on the long boat, you've got your spiked helmet, you're covered in blood, you're on mushrooms, and <laughs> so we're, we're behind you in this long ship. Paco, he's wearing a bear outfit. He has killed a bear. We don't know where he got even the bear outfit from or his tiny little swords, but he's got two of them. He's coming. I've got a... Uh, uh, no, let's go to Corey. Corey's got one of those chairs from wrestling, you know, like WWE. <laughs> we're in like, a we're in chair. like 600s. This is like 600 yeah, BC. Yeah, yeah, Corey's yeah. got a folding chair. We don't even know where that came from. I made it. And it's then... Uh, 
And Sam. So when we're, when we're on that Viking ship headed for Ireland to rape and pillage, yep. mm-hmm. I want you guys there with me. Oh, we're already yeah. there. We're, we, we, we drove our, our Scion TC version 1 out there. We're waiting for you on your Viking ship. Mm-hmm. That sounds, sounds awesome. Good. Sounds good. <laughs> It'd be a Viking ship with a Scion TC <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're taking that with, with us, more, too. You got we're stealing it. it. We're, yes. We're... <laughs> All right, Osbo. <laughs> Thank you so much. I know it's about ready to hit midnight. We will see you in Atlanta. Wish you the best of luck as always. Thank That's you. And uh, congratulations on uh, being number one uh, so far this season. Proud of you, and uh, can't wait to see you hopefully uh, maybe get your first win at Atlanta. We don't know. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. And always a pleasure. And uh, I will never forget seeing uh, Paco with his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, thankfully, you have a photo that will last forever. I'm going to bring you in. A- so the best part is you can post a photo in five years you know from he, here. Hey, Osbo, can you <laughs> oh do my God, God. <laughs> Jesus. The best part is that when Paco finally achieves his goals in five years from now and he takes another photo of him wearing hey, his glasses. Can you, do, hey, uh, can you make a meme of saying this is your man and this is the man you, she's talking about? And it's like, <laughs> this is you, <laughs> this is you and, uh, you and Osbo. Well, just for your pleasure, I'm bringing them to Atlanta so you can wear them too. Wear them under your hey. shoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Freddie. Have a good night. Sweet dream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Later, bro. See you, dude. Take care. Good night. Bye. Night. Later. Paco, oh, did you God. just throw a shocker at him, too? I just, totally uh, gave him My a, God. Uh, that, was auto, that was an autopilot. That was like, that was you gave him a shocker. Don't act like people can't just watch this video anytime they want. I mean, yeah, Osbo's got a photo of it, but... I mean, our fans were going to screenshot that regardless. And oh, my God. It what, there Paco? It it's a medallion that is also... It's... It, there's just glass bearings. I'm... I'm... <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> no, you're right. You're absolutely right. Thanks. I don't know what everybody's freaking out about. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> but, <laughs> this was for you. <laughs> but it was totally worth it. I'm so glad. See, the thing is, did you see how excited he got when he saw those? I mean, he, he, he knew what it he was. He knew what it was. He definitely yeah. knew what it was. He knew they were goggles. So, yep. Um, he's, still, he's a him. goggle man. He's a goggle. Yeah, he's you a can goggler. tell. He's a, yeah. he, 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 goggles, sure. he goggles every now and then. Where's the lazy goggles? If there's anyone, if there's anyone that's really good at Photoshop, it'd be a pretty good photo if you could uh, if you could superimpose, you know, Osbo and the three of us on a Viking long ship. Maybe there's a Ford probe also in the ship. <laughs> a Viking Ford probe. <laughs> yeah, that would be. And we're going to invade Ireland and take back, uh, take back form of the drift in the name of the USA. And part of Norway, too. A little bit yeah, of Norway, so We'll too. have to bring some Norway blood with us. Norway blood, yep. But, uh, well, well, we um, are the sponsors because uh, we, we share we share the same ones. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, we, shoot, we did not thank the we Patreons, have, yeah, though. Exactly. We thank so much, Patreons, for Ooh, uh, Patreons. all you've done for and continued support. And uh, I guess I guess we now have this YouTube Super Chat thing, though, too. So uh, next time when we're, we're live on YouTube, know that you can get your questions expedited because we're whores for money. And uh, Paco's got to... Have us pay his internet bill, which he orders a lot of hentai, so that ain't cheap. <laughs> ain't, hentai ain't cheap. No, I, I can see. Yeah. It. Like you all, see Paco's all, eyes open up when we start talking of, about that. Like all kinds of terrible stuff on the internet are 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 for free. Right. Not hentai. That's true. Tell you yeah. that, man. Yeah. Especially like especially of, those uh, experience here. Those uh, body pillows. Those mm-hmm. are expensive. Can I? We should sell body pillows of Paco in our store. <laughs> <laughs> like body pillows off me. Yeah, for the girls out there, for all our girl fans. All three. I'm actually excited. <laughs> oh. I want I, I, Duke, you I, about one. Randy Man Macho Sand said, oh, also let's do a quick thank way, you for yes. Randy Man. He, uh, he helped us out at Orlando. He handed out tickets, uh, some free tickets. Some of you guys uh, messaged us, and we uh, got you free tickets courtesy of AM Intakes. And uh, Randy Man Macho Sanchez got out there, and he, uh, he uh, delivered some of those, so we appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. So thanks a lot, even though you had to leave after... Top 32 because your dogs were barking at the hotel. Yep, that's not cool. No, actually, he he he's a dog sitter had to leave, oh, so he had like moment. yeah, he missed most of the race. But really appreciate you, Logan. Uh, probably we'll see you at Great Life since apparently you are at every Great Life as well. Yep. So mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, thanks for giving us a hand. And uh, thanks to Jim and Ryan for letting us do our halftime show. And uh, I think we did all right. We did all right with that, Corey. The the Taco Bell uh, menu. That was awesome. Chelsea Chelsea kept on. uh, It was so weird. Like right when we sat down, Chelsea put his hand on my knee. I'm like, all right, this is weird. This is weird. And like five minutes in, uh, like his hand like a little bit closer up. And then uh, I'm like, all right, that's still fine with me. And then uh, near the end of the show, his hand is just creeping inside my mouth. I'm like, you can see (laughs) actually at the end of the video. His hand is just all the way fully just, in my mouth. And yeah. it was, I was it's wondering weird. why I heard Paco half the show, and then you were kind of just like you were talking with a mouthful of marbles. Mm. But it was no, actually it was Chelsea's Chelsea's hand. Just glass bearings. 
Oh, glass bearings. Just yeah. glass bearings yeah. um, fun fact, I did mention this to you guys, but uh, the shipping company I was working with did lose my motor for about seven days. So that's fun. Yeah, that was, yeah, fun. was like a fun a time. So Corey on 420 decides to ship out his 2Js. Oh, that's which a is... fun story. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, my engine just got the PSI about three weeks late, two weeks late, and half the time, once again, I'm calling the shipping company. And it was, I see the delivery date on the tracking and it gets pushed back today and it pushed back another day. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to call. It's two days pushed back. I'm going to call. And they're like, oh, yeah, it should be in route. We'll, we'll bump back tomorrow, right? So I let another two more days go by. I call them and they're like, oh, yeah, we don't see, we don't have that anymore. We have no idea where it's at. So my freshly built 2J from Universal Machine that has built this gnarly 2J for me uh, ended up being lost for about a week. And uh, yeah, they finally found it. In a shipping yard with no track, no shipping labels on it or nothing. So they said, oh, we didn't know where to send it to because all the labels were ripped off. And I called the Universal Machine. I'm like, hey, guys, like, what was up with the labels? They said there weren't any on it. They're like, dude, we put two on the outside and one on the inside. He goes, for three labels to go missing is beyond yeah, me. Yeah, so some, some fucking some piece of shit knew what that was, and he was waiting for it to go unclaimed for a month and was going to steal your motor. Yeah, yep. so there was some weird, sketchy stuff going on, but and so then, was trying to but you know the nice thing is, here's the other thing: if I if I could do a, uh, I don't know, like a warning to people, if you ship something, put it at the declared value because that's the only thing that saved my butt. And I put what's the, that? well, that's when you ship something and it says, "What's the estimated value?" Oh, no, I mean, well, what are you? What you? What was your declared value? Like five million dollars? You got no, the, I, you got I just put it at ten thousand bucks. Just put you it got two J and it's actually made out of Jay Z. Yeah, is nuts. and gold. It was all pure gold. Oops. But what happened was, I talked to like thirty tech support people, and I'm like, "Well, can do you guys are just going to cut me a check for this, or what's what's the story behind that?" And they're like, "Well, let me sir, let me check the declared value on it." And they're like, "Oh, oh, it's ten thousand bucks. I'm going to have to escalate this to my supervisor." As yeah. soon as it did, magically it showed up. Ta-da! Ta-da there it's it is. Magic Sitting around trick. no labels I think on. The best magic trick was putting that, that value, the, the yeah. declared value. So if you guys do ship anything, make sure you put declared value on I think it was like $8 for every 100 and that's what saved my butt. Because I guarantee you, if it only showed you know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 500 bucks, they probably would have said, ah, it's not yeah, worth whatever. doing an investigation on it. But this was a cool photo. Look at this. <clears throat> Oh, look at that. Wow. It's yeah. a 240 with a 2J. Never seen one of those Never before. Never seen it before. No. <laughs> but, well, yeah. I mean, it's a really untried and untrue platform. I'm pretty sure like no one... I've never seen any wins with that. So yeah. kind of going to new territory. Not a lot of information to be ga- ga- gathered. Super hard, from, yeah, uh, super hard to find. I know they're super hard to find, Sam. It was just one of those things that... Yeah, and Megan yeah. from PSI was in there. She was fighting with me along the whole thing. So thanks for those guys at PSI for like... Doing everything, especially Megan, for uh, definitely busting her butt, making sure the shipping company was there. So, Ooh. yep, that's it. More of the story. So hopefully uh, we'll get that bad boy up and going very soon. That motor obviously just set us back about a week, two weeks. So needless to say, you're going to be running at Atlanta. No problemo. Hey, <laughs> yeah, right. I wish. <coughs> Anyways. Um, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I guess uh, that'll be it for today. Yep. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, you can find Sam at Drift Idiot. I think it's, uh, we never, haven't done this in quite a while. We haven't done this in a very long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, can yeah. find Sam on Instagram at Drift Idiot. Same as YouTube. Go check out his uh, uh, driver. Should driver. I have shit? It's the last time we uh, did a podcast on there. Actually, I have I have ideas in the works now. Perfecto. Um, of how to continue the series. So uh, they they won't be executed yet because I. I'm, I'm literally gone every single weekend for the next eight weeks, but uh, let's get him done. Soon and later, I, I have done. some things that I'm thinking about. Sweet. So you can find that on Drift yeah, Idiot's that, that, YouTube that is... channel. Corey? Yes. You can find him on Instagram at Corey Hosford, yeah. and also on YouTube, you can find his antics trying to put his car together. Yep. Mm-hmm. Also on YouTube, and you can find yours truly at Tofu Drift Van. Dot on com. Instagram, dot com <laughs> slash hentai. Midspin. <laughs> Midspin. That's right. And mm-hmm. with that said, uh, thanks, Brian, our, our control guy, operator, buddy, and um, uh, audio uh, that is not Jump on Joby. Yep. Just the multiple yep. things. Yeah. It's cool. all, around, all around strong guy. He's got somersaults. Yep. He, uh, he does the splits. He Every he show, Sam, I don't know, since split. you haven't been here with Brian here, he does the splits naked uh, the whole before episode? every show. No, yeah. just the warm-up. It's just, yeah, it's the warm-up. Okay. You know, I got to get ready for this mental Yeah, we, we kind of call him Jean-Claude Van Brian. Yep. 
junk clod, good. junk clod Van Bryan, where he just lays yeah. his junk on the ground. But anyways, <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next week, and then we'll get ready for Formula Drift Atlanta, where we'll see you guys there. We got some cool stuff with Team Rowdy. We got to forget, not forget that. We'll be doing stuff with uh, Maximum Rowdy Cast. We'll get more details on that. But thanks again, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Have a good night. Bye, Sam. Bye, Corey. Help. Bye, Stay everybody. Hydrated. Practice your karate. The end. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh.